Don't forget to select a seat day tomorrow at Dolphin Stadium from 10 till 2. You can meet oh, Dr. Willis between, uh, you, you won't even be in town, between 10 and 12. How do you know? Because I know where you're going to be tomorrow, at Niagara Falls. I listen. Oh, well. Maybe I'll select my seat at Niagara Falls. Maybe you can send Dontrell over in the barrel. I don't know. But anyway, he'll be out there well, from I 10 would, until 12. Well, I would them off. <laughs> and uh, you, you can lock in tickets for the Red Sox before individual tickets go on sale at Smart Dolphin Stadium at 10. And you can register in a private luxury box for a suite for opening day. That is correct. Wow. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., right like when our show would be on. So you, come you, out on Saturday, they can spend the day out at the uh, ballpark. Yeah, you'd come home for that. No. <laughs> I wouldn't go to a Marlin game if they paid me by the pitch. I used to go a lot. I, I had season tickets before. Not too crazy about that crowd out there. A bunch of idiots. The crowd? In fact, the crowd at the Dolphin game, a bunch of idiots, too. That's why I stopped going there. It's just A uh, lot of people stop going to Dolphin games. Yeah. Too many people just, uh, you know, with a, the, the tailgating is fine. But, you know, when, you, when you're plastered before the game even starts, and then all you're interested in is looking for a fight. And kicking over people's beer and right, you, what are you doing there, ah, you idiot, you Jets fan, you yeah. just a bunch of uh, rowdy drunks. And especially when you got a nice big screen TV and you can sit at home and watch it for free. Why would you want to subject yourself to that? Did uh, did they give you my message yesterday, by the way, no. about the story that was in the post about Bin Laden and his favorite television show? No, Larry King. Really? Uh huh. Doesn't surprise <laughs> me. Birds of a feather. Never misses Larry King. Uh huh. Larry did a fine job last week when he put that uh, Fry guy on there with Oprah calling in. At the, and uh, there, there was uh, Gay Talese's. Isn't that sad? Gay Talese, who wrote Honor Thy Father, great writer, and his wife is yes. the publisher of that piece of crap book. And, and it, you, you can watch the comedy channel today, and you'll see Oprah on there apologizing with his author and ripping him an ass. She's on the food channel. She's on yeah, the gambling channel. That. She's even on a horse racing channel, which in her case, I can see why. I, I, oh, read, yeah. I read about that. What was the thing with Gay Talese? I didn't know that he was involved. His wife is the publisher. Oh. She published, so she's been making a round. She's on all, she was on that same show yesterday with Oprah and this, uh, this liar. I see. That Oprah sold 80 billion books of his because all these stupid women out there, if Oprah farts, they run out there and try to fart the same flavor, you know. And it's just, the world is so sad, man. All these people with no brain of their own. Well, our Middle East policy seems to be working well. Those free you know, elections. That, that really uh, worked out fantastic. You know, the spread of democracy and all these free all these free elections. Maybe free elections aren't such a good thing. I mean, they don't have any in the state, so why should they have any in the Middle East? we got fixed elections in the U.S., so why not have them over there? See what they, you know what they screwed up? They should have sent their friends with the Diebold voting machines over there, both yeah. to Iraq and the, the Palestinians. Our governor seems to be hell-bent on overturning everything the people voted for that right. he didn't like while he was mm -hmm. in office. The latest, now, you, now you finally caught on. The latest being class size. Yeah. You know, now they're trying oh, to... But he's got those devious plans. Don't you remember before he got reelected? He uh, got caught on tape saying he's got devious plans to subvert the, uh, that, that whole deal. And then the public still goes out there and votes for him. He has totally subverted the electorate in this the state. The people of Florida never met a crook they didn't like, whether it was your buddy Raul Martinez in Hialeah. Who was the guy in Sunrise? John Lamello in Sunrise. Every time By the way, Neil, those guys aren't friends of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know something? Sometimes you could use a good friend, yeah, Raul. Well. Yeah. You could use one. In fact, maybe the last four years you could have used a good one. So you don't get punched in the nose. Me? <laughs> well, there's a couple of people who would like to punch both of us in the nose, but it ain't going to happen. Now, if they wanted to punch Gildy in the nose, they'd probably have a bigger target. That's beside the point. <laughs> Gildy will be on today, by the way, from the uh, Yenta Center. Yes. That probably has to do with tonight's uh, Panthers-Devils game. Boy, that could be really uh, not good. Yeah, and Mandich is at Hooters at Doral today. Right. Yeah, not good. Like that Leafs-Buffalo game last night. That was sweet. Buffalo 8, Toronto 4. They're just uh, seven in a row. Just keep getting pounded. It's one thing to lose every day, but when you give up like seven, eight goals every game, there's something basically wrong <laughs> there, but nevertheless. Sun is shining. It's going to be 43 degrees. There's my Toronto weather report for that guy that says it's going to be like that here. here. Huh? It's going to be a little cool here today. Is it really? Yeah. Well, then you'll enjoy yourself at Gulfstream. I'm not going out today, tomorrow. Well, what do you mean by that? I'll be oh, there you tomorrow. you are going there tomorrow? Yeah, I have to. Oh, because you can't fit it anywhere else. Well, it's not just that. I have to. Uh, well, uh, it's Jerry Bailey's last day. Uh, yeah. Oh, you want to be there for Jerry Bailey. Yeah, he's out there having a little party afterwards. But besides that, he's coming to work with the SPN and ABC. I'll be damned. So I'll be working with him. Well, that's great. Yeah. 
I see a big shake. Maybe we can you. do a crossover, me and Sherry. <laughs> yeah, there, there it is. Do a little crossover on the air. You're big in a crossover. He can do a little cross dress. <laughs> Whatever it is. I gotta, I'm got. i not going to say you'll get all bent out of shape. I'm, I'm just tired of Jerry Bailey. He's a great jockey. I just tell you, give somebody else a chance, you know. He is. He's retiring. I, I know that. That's what I mean. Like John Campbell with the Trotters. You know, you've been great for a long time. Just step aside. Go away. Go back well, to well, how you're Canada's criticizing now. me. That's what he's doing. Uh, I know. Well, good. I see. It goes to show you. And you I know something? I heard all of us, and they vanish. magic touch. I was talking with a friend of mine from California who was in the horse business yesterday, and we were saying that, that here's a guy who's going out at the right time. Yeah, you know, that's he's, right. He's still good. and uh, Absolutely. That's why it's my last show today. Goodbye. This is it? Yeah. <laughs> you, you just convinced me. You talked me into it. Wait till you see the, uh, look at the check, Neil, and then, you know. Yeah. Yeah, when it shows up. Thanks to Joe Bell. Got my check there on time. This uh, Thanks to, like, emergency uh, repair solutions because our part-time program director was gone for two and a half days again. Very sad. But we got a new regime now. We got it's uh, you know just barely into the new year, so we can like turn over a new fig leaf now and really start uh, kicking some ass. Yeah. Like Greg Kotex. So anyway, we uh, then I guess I got the facts while you and I were talking yesterday about the fact that he's the singing uh, pansy or whatever it is on the Labaster show in the afternoon. He's a regular over there. And a Harold puts his uh, this bogus thing on there like a make believe pole. Oh please. The only good part of it is that almost all the comments on there are like from our retardo people, our crazy, my crazy uh, audience out there. They're the ones that put almost all the comments on that the blog. Nice going, Eddie. You know, this is Eddie. The crazy guys we got. We're a million of them. <laughs> yeah. They'll teach you to mess with us. We'll, we'll unleash all of our lunatics on you over there, Greg uh, yeah. That's the one. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> That's the one. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy is right. <laughs> People ask me, what do you do for a living? I say, oh, I talk to crazy people four hours every day. I, I've been saying that for years, and that's the truth. I talk to maniacs for four hours every day. Don't we people all? People whose motto is... I have no life. Yeah. Don't we all? You know who Geldy's first call was yesterday? I yeah. don't know. I'll give you 18 guesses. His first and I can't call. think of what his name is either. Uh, Juan from Little Havana. Oh. I think that was the one. I one, of, one of those chronics that they used to talk to in the morning, the same five people every day. Oh, yeah. Okay, guess I missed that's, it. That's kind of sad. That, that's why I don't. Uh, we not only don't screen calls on my show. We don't give anybody any names because I don't. I don't. I don't go for that. Here's a Dan in uh, Pembroke Pines. Who gives a crap? You know. Here's about Dan. Just another voice, another desperado. So you're leaving when? You're leaving Monday morning, or I'm doing a show, weekend? and then I'm leaving Monday. So oh, I'll be here there. Monday morning, and oh. then I'm taking off. Well, then I won't wish you bon, a bon voyage to Detroit. Boy, I, uh, I'm I all set up. I wouldn't want to go to Detroit the... if they paid me by the second. I'm all set they up. They gave me a, a loose machine, man, in the casino there. I wouldn't go to Detroit. I, I made my last trip there several years ago. Well, I, got... I had a vacation. I thought, well, where am I going to go on vacation this year? You know, it was many years ago, and I went back to Detroit. You know that saying, you Ooh. can't go back? Yeah. You can't. I wouldn't go there on vacation. Oh, my goodness. I was there one night, and then I got on a plane and went someplace. I forget where the hell I went, but I sure got the hell out of there. My God. Well, the Greek town oh. casino called, and uh, I'm set up for there on Tuesday. Yeah, well, make sure, like I said, take Raul Martinez. Have a bodyguard. It's kind of like Atlantic City. The casinos are nice inside. Well, no, they're really not, but uh, it's okay inside. But once you go outside, you have that feeling of the smell of death in the air, you know, like yeah. you're going to get mugged any minute. You don't have to go outside to get there. They have a people mover. It goes right from the hotel to the casino. Yeah, well, they're smart. They know. Yep. They know nobody wants to walk around in downtown Detroit. That's a shame, too. Just like Tiger Stadium. Do you have any idea how many games I went to at Tiger Stadium? What a what a fun ballpark that was. I went there once. You are real close to the uh, oh, I uh, love players, that you know. Just just a fabulous ballpark. It was like Fenway, you know, the same yeah, kind of place. Yeah, that's right, only a little bit bigger, right. Don't have but, them anymore uh, like that. <laughs> you don't want to go there well. It's one of those things, changing neighborhoods, changing uh, cities. Changing ballparks. Right. Changing underwear. I remember when you uh, used to do the remote from Wrigley, from, uh, from that bar up the street from Wrigley Field. Murphy's Bleachers right across the street from Wrigley Field, right. Yep. We did that a couple of years. Those were fun shows. Were they? Yeah. Well, we had fun at Wrigley, I'll tell you that. And then when Harry Carey came in that one day, we yeah, thought it was, was great. We thought he was going to stiff us. And I'm just, just in the middle of saying, well, he's probably busy getting ready for the game. And the, op the door opens just as I said it. 
And here he came in. I never realized how small he was. He was a very short guy. Yeah. And uh, just a great guy, though. We had a fantastic conversation. He was really impressed with the fact that I remember that he used to call St. Louis University Billikens basketball on KMOX. That's probably the only person alive who remembered that. But he was great at that, too. Billikens got the ball. He, he was just great. I mean, he was no, uh, don't, 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 you know, don't, don't, not one of those guys. But he was good. Did you ever meet Harry? Yes, I did. <laughs> what, what are you smirking about now? Well, you brought him up today. I, did, I didn't say a word. All I, I said was, don't, 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 don't. all I said. <laughs> You know, for him to be knocking Johnny most, that's one of the, one of the eight trillion things about him that used to really piss me off big time. Well, he knocked uh, he Johnny knocked Keith, he knocked Keith Jackson the other day. Well, I mean, I, I did too because I think Keith Jackson's old and senile. I mean, I used to like Keith Jackson. For him to do that one game didn't bother me. It bothered me a lot. He was awful. But anyway, getting back to uh, Johnny most. Now, I when I lived in Boston, I hated the Celtics. I mean, like poison. Because as a kid growing up, I was of course a Rochester Royals fan, which long defunct, but. Uh, you know, and so you learn to hate the Celtics. And, and Johnny Most was so partisan that unless you were a Celtics fan, you hated him. But he sure was great. If, and that's that's what you want. You want a homer. Who doesn't like a homer? Bob he's, Prince? He huh? just liked him because his name was Moskowitz. I never knew that till this moment. That was his name was Moskowitz? Yes. I didn't know Johnny Most was uh, Polish. Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. We got robbed. He, he was great. He was so much fun. Like Myron Cope in Pittsburgh, man. They don't make him like those guys no. anymore. You, mean, you talk about Joe Buck. You know, forget about content. But just all of these guys today, they sound the same. D uh, Dave O'Brien and Joe Buck, they don't have any personality. They're, they don't stand out. They're just another voice. Well, Jack you know, Buck a, was great. Well, Jack Buck was from that other era, though. Yep. You know where Jack Buck started? Rochester Red Wings baseball. There's a little piece of trivia for you. It was a Cardinal Farm team, wasn't That's it? That's correct. And then he went to uh, St. Louis to work with Harry, and Tom Decker was the voice of the Red Wings. And Joe Cullinane. Boy, what crap is coming out of my brain today, man? That's what happens wow. when you get old. you got all these incredible memories, most of them bad, but nevertheless. Yeah, Jack Buck was in Rochester for one season, and he went up to the, big, to the bigs. Nice man, too. Was he? Yes, very Never nice. met him. I met Milo Hamilton, which everybody ripped him an ass. He was very nice to me. Because, uh, you know, when I worked at J&O in Palm Beach, uh, I, did, I did the uh, West Palm Expos baseball. I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, he was there, of course, because the Braves were, did their spring training there in West Palm. So I met him. I had him on my show a couple times, my sports show. I didn't know you did the Palm Beach Expos. I sure did. Did a heck, heck of a job. Yeah, I could have been a great sportscaster, man, but you know something? I think I made the right turn. I I'm, I'm, could be wrong, but I think I made the right turn when I came to that fork in the road. I looked around. I said, all these ex-jocks, all these illiterate, dumb ex-jocks are getting all the jobs now. And you that's sound that's like worse. Cosell now. Well, that's true. The jockocracy, that's, he was exactly right. He's the first one who had the balls to say it. And especially when he was working with a dullard like Frank Gifford. My God, you talk about dull and un semi-literate. I mean, inarticulate. The only thing that kept Gifford going is the fact that he was working with Cosell and Meredith all those years. That, that's what kept him going. He was pathetic. Although it was on ABC, so you probably like Frank. He's a good guy. Well, <laughs> well, he's he's had a lot of uh, problems in his life. He's got poor Kathy Lee to overcome. You know, you gotta you gotta feel for anybody married to a witch like that. You know, some Frank. Uh, he actually is a good guy, and uh, you know he had a... Bob Greasy's probably a good guy too, but he's awful. But go ahead, I'm sorry. But you know, Frank lasted a long time in that job. Yeah. He lasted a long time because he was part of a, uh, he, he was like the lesser ingredient. And the bizarre part is... Well, you know why he lasted? One of the reasons he lasted all those years was because he was you know, he was close to ruin. You know, the guy who ran ABC Sports. Yeah, it must be. He must have had naked pictures. But, you know, he lasted well beyond Meredith and Cosell. I mean, I mean, just stop and think. Compare Al Michaels to uh, Frank Gifford. Okay, is there any comparison? Al's great. Well, um, is there any comparison? No. <laughs> okay. Well, that sure was hard to get that out. Yeah, well, Frank might be listening now. You know, we don't want to hurt his feelings. He, uh, I think he spent some time down the Keys. Oh, speaking of hurting people's feelings, hey, Defoe, we don't want any party, okay? We're not interested. Uh, if you open if you open that window in your contract, just jump right out. Well, we'll give you a little push. That was some more good news I heard from uh, certain parties. Not interested. Going back and rehashing the same old tired cornball stuff, you know what I mean? On that note... Yes. 
Have a great uh, time at Gulfstream tomorrow. You too. Say hi to Wherever Joe Tannenbaum. Wherever you are, you'll be at the... Uh... Say hi to Joe Tannenbaum. I don't think I'll see Roy, Joe. Uh... He's not there anymore. Oh, and the ghost of Roy, uh, what's his name that you told Slant me about? Slanthoff. Slanthoff. Yeah. Why did you tell me that? That's just uh, mind-blowing. Don't you understand how old that makes us all feel when everybody we know starts dying and we know that we're going to be next? That's bad. Yeah. Roy Slanthoff, his wife died, and then he died, and Bill Calder died, and then his wife died. Did you know that Mary Ellen died? I didn't know that. Several years ago, she had breast cancer. She had been remarried, had a kid, and was happy as could be, and then she uh, got breast cancer and died. So it's going around, man. So when you're getting wined and dined in Detroit next week, just, uh, you know, push no, a little bit away. I'm push pushing a lot away. away. Please. Yes. Take the money, but push the food away. I'm with you. You can't gamble with food. I'll Have take, a great weekend. I'll, I'll take chips instead. There you go. And with no fish. See ya. <laughs> Bye. For big time sports talk, he's a mad dog. Jim Anders. You salute an accomplishment like Pat Summit up in Tennessee. Wins her 900th game. That's amazing. Yes. Wow. I'm going to say it's one of the greatest basketball coaches, period, is Pat Summer. <laughs> Dean Smith, I'm saying Pat Summer. When you say Mike Krzyzewski, I'm saying, uh, you know, John Wood, and she's up there with anybody that coaches uh, hoops at the collegiate level. When you say Pat Summer, I'm saying dominatrix, man. I mean, she's just got one of those looks, one of those styles. I can envision putting, like, a black leather outfit on her, like some chains and stuff that tie me up to the bed. Nice long whip. <laughs> Make you run some suits. Suicide Friday, you bastard. What did Jen say when she heard the news about Miss Jolie? Was she upset, sad, and crying? Did she act like a banshee? Did she swear? Does she care that Brad put that baby there? Did she get the heebie cheebie? Did she walk? Fifteen at five sixty already. Look at that time, man. Wow. Time's going by. How come uh, I'm hearing Hank in the back there for a second or two doing that spot, Miguel? Sorry. Oh, that wasn't on the air though, was it? No, no. Well, thank God for that. You missed Hank uh, cutting the spot there. We should probably put it on the air. It kind of like got the audience a little confused. We could do that. Hey, speaking of confused, rhymes with shoes. And if you're shopping for shoes, head over to Brandy's in Pompano Beach. They've been around a long, long time. Not as long as I have, but then again, even the dinosaurs haven't been around that long. Brandy's Shoes carries a humongous selection of all the major brands. they got your Rockport, Florsheim, Echo, Mephisto, SAS, New Balance. You like them, they got them. And at Brandy's, their professional shoe fitters will make damn sure you have a customized fit of your very favorite comfort shoe every time. Just ask for Arnie. He'll take good care of you and make sure you get the perfect fit at the right price every time. They even specialize in wide widths at Brandy's if you have big, fat, disgusting, platypus-like feet. Brandy's is worth the trip from anywhere in South Florida, so don't forget for that unbeatable combination... Comfort, style, fit, value, and selection. Always think Brandy Shoes, and you'll find Brandy's at 1290. North Federal Highway in Pompano Beach. They're open daily, Monday through Saturday till 9, every Sunday till 5. And every week, there's something really special going on at Brandy's to save you more cash. This week, Sperry Topsiders in both men's and women's styles will save 10 to 20 bucks a pair only this week. And only at Brandy Shoes in Pompano Beach. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. A Buffalo Bill. Just got out of bar and took a hit. Then would he act like Cheech and Chong and get the munchies and make brownies filled with hash? 
And would he share it with Jesus and the saints, those pious potheads? And yeah, yeah, heart is great. And yeah, yeah, heart is good. And yeah, 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 yeah. What is God's most cannabis? Smoking hot like one of us Getting high on the back of the bus Just him and Moses getting stoned <coughs> On a Greyhound bus to Rome To get some Vatican homegrown A couple time bags to take home Smoke a big Bob Marley on his throne. No fun in heaven lifts your stone. No question about that, because what else are you going to do? 1022 at 560 WQM. Don't forget to come out to Marlin's Select a Seat. Go pick your seat tomorrow at Dolphin Stadium, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Make sure nobody sees you doing it. You can meet Dontrell Willis between 10 and noon. You can lock in tickets for the Red Sox before individual tickets go on sale. I don't understand that. Why, why does anybody care about seeing the Red Sox? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, they're the world champions from uh, a while back. Oh. Plus, yeah. plus, you can register when a private luxury suite for opening day. That's Marlon Selected Seat tomorrow, Dolphin Stadium, 10 in the a.m. till 2 in the b.m. You got that? All right. Good. Anyway, wait till you hear this story before I tell you about these two movies I watched yesterday. And George watched Imaginary Heroes and said it was great. It was excellent. Good. What's not to like, right? Nothing. Sigourney Weaver was great. Jeff Daniels was good. Mm -hmm. Emil Hirsch was sensational. What's not to like? Well, Michelle Williams could have gotten naked or something. Well, she did. And I think it would have been a waste of time anyway. Uh, Speaking of that, application sent by Seton Hall University to prospective students overseas unwittingly contained a tool-free number offering the opportunity to chat with hot, horny girls. All right. The Catholic University, founded in 1856, said it accidentally transposed numbers and admissions applications sent to possibly tens of thousands of applicants. Oh, they're going to be lining up like crazy to get into Seton Hall. Spark up your days and nights with stimulating talk, the recording says. It then refers to a second 800 number, a phone sex line can, uh, selling con- conversations with students, housewives, and working girls for 99 cents to 2.99 a minute. Seton Hall spokesman Thomas White told the Star Ledger of Newark for Thursday's newspapers that the error was in both the online and the print applications that may have been present for several years. I'm surprised we didn't catch it before now, White said. This was a very unfortunate typo. That's probably because there were no uh, uh, objections to it. A very unfortunate typo. We apologize to any of our international applicants who were affected by this. The phone number was supposed to connect students with World Education Services, a New York-based firm that screens international academic credentials. As of yesterday morning, the university was in the process of removing all references online, although nothing could be done about print applications already mailed out. Similar typos have caused embarrassment for other institutions recently. Last year, motorists looking for special license plates were accidentally sent by brochures on the website of New Jersey's Motor Vehicle Commission to a phone sex line. In December, seniors calling a toll-free number to ask questions about Medicare were directed to a similar service due to a misprint in 20,000 letters sent by Insure Humana. And they were all going like... Oh, my God. Like that. And uh, using a lot of extra oxygen. A lot of pacemakers went out. So the log is a back, uh, back ass word, huh? Yeah, I noticed yes. that. Miguel's fault. Well, probably. No. When the hell is uh, Josh showing up after his father gets his knee uh, chopped up? I don't know. Here's a fax that says, well, isn't this great? Wow. By the way, you know, Riley, you de- definitely need <laughs> I have no to get a life. This guy, he wants to be like a, a part of the show. He says, by the way, your buddy LeBastard mentioned you yesterday on his radio show. And let me just say this about uh, Greg Kotex and that silly-ass poll they're doing. Uh, very few more votes going on there because everybody realizes the thing is uh, fixed from the inside. It's just a joke. And all the comments that are on there, uh, I would say 90% of all the uh, comments that the uh, that stupid-ass chat room he's got going are... Yeah, that's uh, who sent him, Steve, whatever his name is, uh, McGill, McGill, what is the guy's name? McGowan. McGowan, well, whatever it is, idiot. LeBastard was talking about Ron Artest and how Indiana was dumb for trading him. LeBastard's view was Artest sells tickets and wasn't... First of all, why the hell were you listening to uh, that, Riley? You see, I mean, we got Mandich on, he's listening to that crap. 
Uh, an unbelievable play, regardless of his antics and controversy. Stugatz asked if the audience would accept a Ron R. test of radio as a host. LeBastard says, yes, controversy means ratings, ratings means money. Look at our Howard Stern and our buddy across the street, Neil Rogers. Guess what, Danny boy, ain't your buddy, okay? You stick with the booster. That's your buddy with the orange hair. Maybe he likes cartoon characters. Our buddy across the street. Guess what, Danny boy, you ain't fooling nobody. And that smell is back. I think my computer is frying or something. Maybe. You think so? Well, it's possible. Well, why would that be? Just uh, one of those things. Maybe a bug crawled in there. There ain't no bugs in this place, or, uh, okay? There's no lids. bugs. Maybe some huh? belly bug Maybe fell in toe there. Toe jam? Yeah. Maybe some of my toe jam got in there. Because there's this really pungent aroma in here, and I'm sniffing around all morning long trying to. It's only in this room. And now it's about, I pulled the uh, plug up to shut the computer completely down for about a half an hour, and it, like, went away. And now i got to plug the computer's working okay oh. until it goes on fire or something. That's right. Or blows huh? up. You think it's going to blow up? Could be. Hmm. I, I just bought this damn thing. It's only, I only had it a few months. It's a, it's a beauty, man. That's the way it goes. I'll, you know what? I'll just put it in the closet and go get a new one. That's right. That's the way you do it. When you got a few bucks, That's you don't right. go get it fixed. You don't like, yeah, oh, it's got a five-year warranty. The hell with that. Just, just get a new one. Spread the cash around, baby. That's the way to do it. This is Neil How's Rogers. my buddy Dan LaBastard doing over this there? Is hey, Dan, you LaBastard. Hey, you bastard. Tell me something we don't already know, Mr. President. Our country is at war, and our government has the obligation to protect the American people. Tell me something we don't already know, Mr. President. And we are aggressively doing that. We are finding terrorists and bringing them to justice. We are gathering information about where the terrorists may be hiding. We are trying to disrupt their plots and plans. Anything we do to that effort, any activity we conduct, is within the law. We do not torture. And I wonder how much you tell the truth sometimes. There's an enemy that works and plots and plans and wants to hurt America again. And so you bet we'll aggressively pursue them. Tell me something we don't already know, Mr. President. But we will do so under the law. And that's why you're saying members of my administration go and brief the Congress. We do not torture. And I wonder how much you tell the truth sometimes. We do not torture. Mr. Bush, Abu tell Garo. the Red. truth. Yeah, I tell you what, you're torturing a lot of us. Make no mistake about it. Okay, let's look at that award-winning lineup. Let's get this thing organized, okay? Two o'clock, we got Gildy from the BAC. That stands for Yenta Center. Four o'clock, it's Mad Dog at Hooters Durrell. Uh, seven o'clock, Panther Preview. At 7.30, that's the uh, Panthers and the Devils at the Macarena. Could be really ugly because the Devils are hot as a pistola. The Panthers are choking and gagging. Oh, and by the way, I got a spy report. Oh, I should have mentioned this to the Humper. From yeah. uh, my friend who was at the game, the uh, Columbus game. He said if there were 3,000 people there, that was a lot. The game where they said the attendance was, uh, not Columbus, who did they play? Uh, Carolina. If the tendency announced 12,005. He said if there were 3,000 people there, that counted the ushers and the players and the coaches and the officials as well. And the people like in a parking lot who were just uh, smoking a big fat one. How do you like that? Okay. 3,000 people there against the uh, division-leading uh, hottest team in League Carolina Hurricanes, and uh, nobody was there. Anyway, the Devils will be in town, which uh, Marty Brodeur never loses to Florida. And Eddie K after the hockey game. That's our award-winning lineup. I think my computer is burning up. It burns. Huh? Could be. What do you think? I don't know. Just let it uh, run its course. Let it be? No, I'm going to, like, unplug it. Well, yeah. I don't want really to have Eventually. a forest fire in here while I'm uh, plunging my guns out. Okay, here's yesterday's poll result. Who best fits this? I still can't get over that. Uh, you know, Riley, you need, need to get a life. Get, 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 some, get uh, a blow-up doll. Anything. Someone who thinks they can sing, but they can't. How many votes did we get on this? 1491. Wow, what a great year. That was the year that uh, Columbus was uh, diddling with, uh, what's her name, Queen Isabella. Right. Yoko Ono, 197. Ashley Simpson, 181. We had a good race there. Nice contest. How come this thing isn't working either? Oh, now, please. Please. Oh, don't tell me this thing is screwed up. That would be really, really bad, wouldn't it? I yeah, just it ran my spy bot. And it's just kind of like sitting there, and then it goes back to, eh, well, anyway, the audience doesn't care about that. They want to be entertained. They want to be amused right. and uh, titillated and stuff like that. Dance, monkey. They don't care that my computer's going to, like, blow up right here. It smells like iodine in here. See, look at that. It, did, it didn't uh, it didn't do nothing. Oh, this is oh, no. bad. Huh? I said, oh, no. 
William Hung, 105. William Shatner, 101. John Ascroft, 92. JLo, 82. Kevin Federline, 67. Can he belt one out? No. Or what? Kelly Os uh, David Hasselhoff, 48. Kelly Osborne, 47. Celine Dion, 44. Lisa Marie Presley, 41. Dyke. Eddie Murphy, 37. Paris Hilton, 35. Yeah. 34. Bob Dylan, 31. Regis Philbin, 31. And it still didn't do anything there. Look at that. Mm. It's just, uh, oh, well. I'm getting out of that thing. I'm just going back home. You know what I mean? Yeah, go home. Uh, Bob Dylan, 31. Regis Philbin, 31. Kathy Lee Giver, 29. Jamie Foxx, 28. Ricky Ticky Sanchez, 27. Will Smith, 27. Tony Danza. Enrique Iglesias, 22. A piece, same guy. Roseanne, 20. Don Johnson, 19. Sly Stallone, 18. Justin's Tinkerbell, 16. Now, who is telling me that he's an actor now? Miguel. He's in Sundance. Yeah, well, good for him. Uh, Lindsay Lohan, 13. Lohan. Bruce Willis, 10. Deion Sanders, 10. Greg Kotex, 8. The Singing Nun on the afternoon show on Across the Street. Our good friends Across the Street. Stu Gotts and Dan LeBastard. Uh, Ricky Martin, 6. John Travolta, 6. Johnny Stamos and Hulk Hogan and Patrick Sleazy, 5 apiece. Rosie O'Donnell, 4. Joey Lawrence, 4. Willie Nelson, 3. Chuck Norris and Mark Wahlberg and Philip Thomas Michael and Michael Thomas, 2. David Soule, 2. Vicky Lawrence, 2. Paul Servino, 1. And Tom White's, none, because nobody knows who that is. <laughs> Tom waits, and we, uh, and we wait for my computer to blow up. I think this thing is illin. Uh-oh. Don't, don't you think that's bad? It, well, of course it's bad. Yo, Jay. <laughs> wait. You be illin. That is bad. So before I give you, like, today's poll, oh, here's another very important poll. we got all the polls you could ever want, even you poll lovers out there. Most think Bush is failing second term. All right. What do you think? Absolutely. A majority of Americans are more likely to vote for a candidate in November's congressional elections who opposes President Bush, and 58% consider a second term a failure so far, according to a new poll come out yesterday. Fewer people consider Bush to be honest and trustworthy now than a year ago, and 53% said they believe his administration deliberately misled the public about Iraq's purported weapons program before the U.S. invasion in 2003, according to the new CNN USA Today Gallup uh, Schwartz uh, poll. 53% say they believe he deliberately lied to the public to get us in the war in Iraq, and yet he's still uh, the president, and he's still on the air for like two, three hours every day talking crap and looking like a moron. How do you like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this computer, I think maybe something to fry it in there. Uh-oh. Huh? Is that possible? Of course it's possible. Well, I, but it's still working right now, but I have sure. a feeling. And it's that smell, that iodine kind of smell is coming up into the room again. I'm probably going to swoon and pass out in the middle of the show today. Jeez, I would like to have lived just at least through the weekend so I could go back and plunge my guts out of Niagara. See all those beautiful young couples there, those honeymoon couples? Shoot a few of the uh, bitches. I mean... <laughs> what? Well, they get, get in the way, you know. That what? Is, well, I don't know. Everything seems to be working out here just fine. So I probably can take up an office pool. Call up Eddie K at home. He'll give you the uh, morning line odds on what time did my computer is going to blow up today in the middle of the show. No, that we'll, is really bad news. We'll get a chart going. WQAM, hello. Hello. Yes. How you doing? Neil, what was the, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what was the track, that shaft sounding track that you had on your intro, if you don't mind telling me? What was the track we had on the intro? You're asking me? Papa yeah. Rolling. Can I ask George? Papa was a Rolling Stone, by the way. Oh, I couldn't actually wasn't paying attention to it because I kept hearing Hank talking in the background, cutting a spot. Temptation. Papa was a Rolling Stone? Right. Thank you, sir. Papa was Mick Jagger's a daddy. Great show. And okay. Mama? Yeah, what, what is uh, that? The first time we ever had anybody call for that. Let me go in. <laughs> I really. want to sniff this. Just a minute. Let me sniff it. You know what? That that's not what it is. No, that, that is definitely not what else. it is. Maybe, no, uh, huh? Maybe a rat died in the corner. No, it's not that kind of a smell either. There ain't no rat in here, Mister. Maybe it's like something in the building, like right above this room. It's it only very well room. be. You think? Maybe, maybe a rat died upstairs, and maybe there's a uh, huh? Some French Canadian right. visiting upstairs. Maybe the people upstairs left their uh, bathtub. But if that's the, the case, how come my spa bod didn't uh, clear out them items? Huh? 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 I don't know, Mister Computer Expert. I don't know. So let me tell you about the two movies I watched yesterday when we come back from the break. One of them, very good, which, uh, oh, it's too bad Josh isn't there. He'd be very proud, but too bad. He's he, busy. He uh, might be listening. I doubt it. He's probably listening across the street, spying. Yeah, we got spies on you guys across the street listening to us, uh, see what kind of crap you're talking. My good friend Neil Rogers across the street, yeah. Who are you kidding, Danny, you jackass, you little leaguer, you, you, you egotistical maniac. 
You're going to have a big ego. There's one thing you need to go with it, which you lack, and that's called, like, talent. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Coming up tonight on Inside the Behind the True Hollywood Celebrity Music Biography Profile Story. They were one of the biggest alternative bands of the 80s and 90s, despite the fact that their lead singer was dead the entire time. They were the cure. I don't care about you, it's Friday. I'm in love. Oh yeah, I've been dead since 1981. I was depressed at first, but I think I made it work for me. The cure's frontman, Robert Smith was a ghoulish figure with pale white face and shocking Edward Scissorhands hair. Well, I mean, it's a bit of a drag. We went through a lot of personnel changes in the band, you know, with my having to gradually suck their brains out with a straw for nourishment. Sure, I could see that. Of course, this was the 80s, so as they had more and more of their brains sucked out, the music got better. Makes sense. Basically, I didn't want a little thing like being dead to get in the way of my main goal. Which was what? Writing it songs and banging lots of crumpet. That's necrophilia. Well, for them, yeah. Not for me. I was already dead. I never looked at it that way. Oh, sure. It ain't necrophilia if you're already dead. I mean, at worst, I'm guilty of what? Uh, aliveophilia. Huh. You're pretty on top of it for a dead guy. And listen, mate. I am still the one, the only, the original walking corpse. Eat my smoke, Michael Jackson. The Cure. Hey, we would never have had those hot, slutty goth chicks without them. It's a big, juicy, sopping wet look at show business. Tonight, on Inside the Behind. So you'd be pleased to know that that the spotlight did work, and it was just, uh, everything's oh, fine. I am not okay. relieved. Are you relieved now? That my computer probably isn't going to blow up in the middle of the show. After the show, I'll just unplug it. Right, just uh, hit it with the hose. Okay. What movie, this is the pool uh, we're doing now and through the weekend. What movie should never have been remade? All the bad remakes all the time. 697. Psycho 67, Planet of the Apes, Poda 66, and War of the World 63. <laughs> oh, there's that oh, noxious fumes are going to get me gagging today. It's probably, a, you know, probably what it is. It's because you got me to take all that Norton antivirus stuff out of my computer yesterday, and there's probably a virus in my room now. Probably. Definitely Ebola. Pink Panther 58, The Longest Yard 53, Bad News Bears 45, Herbie the Love Bug. You know how many that's got? About 30, man. Rollerball 27. Even with Chris Klein, still uh, he couldn't put it over the top. Ocean's 11.20. Miracle on 34th Street, 19. The Blob, 18. Shaft, 15. Did you say Isaac Hayes was a Scientologist? That's what I said. Oh, that's bad news. Flight of the Phoenix, 15. Guess who's coming? Guess what's coming at dinner, 13. Godzilla's coming at dinner, 13 for Godzilla. Stepford Wives, 12. Manchurian Candidate, 11. Amityville Horror, 10. The Producers, 10. Why did they do that? A Star is Born, 10. The Postman Always Rings, twice, 9. Freaky Friday, 8. Walking Tall, 8. Lawn, uh, Dawn of the Dead, 8. La Caja Fall, The Birdcage, 7. Dr. Doolittle, 7. Gone in 60 Seconds, uh, 7. House of Wax, 7. The Fog, 6. Meet Your Black, 6. The Out of Towners, 5. Cheaper by the Dozen, 5. Mr. Deeds, 5. Dracula, 5. Time Machine, 5. When a Stranger Calls, 5. Don't see it. It's coming to a theater near you so, uh, soon. Avoid it like the plague. Cape Fear, 5. Have you checked the children? I mean, when, when, I, I still can't get over that. And then when I they tell know. me that they, uh, they give the giveaway line to the whole right. thing, he's in the house, uh, get out of there right away. They've well, been doing that a lot lately, not just with this movie. Giving away the well, whole... Well, it saves you some money anyway. Yeah, then you have to waste your money to go see it. Not that I would anyway, but yeah. Cape Fear, 5. Alfie, 4. Inherit the Wind, 3. The Italian Job, 3. Uh, the Hills Have Eyes, 2. Assault on Precinct, 13, 2. Vanilla Sky, 1. And None for 12 Angry Men or The Getaway, out of 705. Are you impressed or what? Okay. Okay, here's my movie review right after this very important call. QAM, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You have Starsky and Hutch on there. Starsky and Hutch was uh, a movie? I thought it was a TV show. It was. That okay. they, made, they made it into a movie. Does yeah. it, does that... That's not a remake, yeah. though. Sorry. Nice try. They don't understand the question. Oh, that's new. What movie should never have been remade? Not what TV show. I mean, if we that's, that's a whole separate that's poll. That's another poll. What's they the did the Brady right? Bunch movie, and they did, uh, oh, eight, seven, everything, right. Oh, it's my God. Movie. Right? The Munsters movie. Sure. sure. You name it. Anyway, so yesterday I had a little exciting episode trying to watch City of God, which people have been nudging me. You've got to watch City of God. Okay. <laughs> so you burned me a really bad copy I'm a couple sorry. weeks ago, and I started watching it on a day I wasn't in the mood to watch any movie, I guess. And I just uh, stopped after about five minutes. I said, ah, the hell with this. And so I started watching it again uh, two nights ago. 
And then I watched about an hour of it, and I told you there was like some breakup in the digital or DVD thing, yeah. but not too bad. And then, and then I realized I'm like, this is a two hour plus movie. I'm going to go to bed and I'll watch the rest tomorrow. Uh, so uh, the show ends yesterday at two. I pop that baby in there, make me a little lunch, and while I'm eating lunch, I put it in there. And right after the part where Benny gets shot by accident, oh, I'm sorry, Benny gets shot. So, um, what? Oh no, that's. By the way, you know, Benny should have done something with that hair. That was not a good color. No. Uh, you know, the glasses were bad enough. But right. uh, anyway, so help. Benny gets a shot. And then right after that, which really gets to the really important part of the movie, the most important, uh, and then all of a sudden it starts breaking up real badly again. Damn it. The digital breakup on that DVD. God was punishing you for burning a copy. See? I shouldn't have uh, blown my nose. So I thought it. to myself, well, gee, I've watched this much, and I'm really enjoying it. It's pretty good. But I, And now i got to put on my uh, jacket. It was colder than hell. I go to the uh, neighborhood uh, music store. And uh, I'm looking under City of God, can't find it. And not only don't I find it, but I don't don't even find like the empty uh, thing there for the file. Or just they're out of them. There's no such thing. The tab. The what? The tab. The, the tab hunter, whatever. Yeah, tab hunter was there. He said he was. Yay. I said, yeah, we know, get lost. You're old. So I came back home. In fact, I went to another uh, store and looked, and they also didn't have it. So I came back home and I went to IMDb because I thought, I think this movie's got like about 40 other names. La Cité des Dieux. Oh, the French name. Oh, I see. No, that, that's not the name of it. That's that, that's on the packaging. I see. Uh, I see, because uh, everything here has to also have the frog on it. Acclaimé internationalement. Uh, yeah, it's got, oh boy, how sad. So, but the other name of it is uh, Cid, uh, not Ciudad, because that's Spanish. It's Portuguese. Oui. Uh, Cidade de, 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 or something like that. So I wrote that down, and I went over there, and I thought, well, now I'm going to find it. And I looked that up, and there's still one there. And, of course, I'm just, I'm not one of those people that likes to go to the information desk and say, uh, you have, I, I should have done that, but that's no fun. It's like right. asking people for directions, you know. Yeah, I know. What man does that? That's right. So I want to be a manly man. So I, I thought to myself, well, let me look under the, uh, they have it like a world, world uh, movie section, whatever they call it, world something. And uh, sure enough, there was City of God. And I came back, and I uh, queued it up to where I had left off, and it was damn good. It was excellent. Not Now, Roger Ebert, you know, who's a very silly uh, you fairy. person, uh, on the front of it, it says, one of the best films you'll ever see. You know, I, I would not say, and it's got that 8.8 .8 out of 10. No, it was very good. The fact that it's got subtitles, it's in a foreign language, and it's got subtitles, yeah. immediately they add about a point and a half for That's that. That's right. So it was excellent. It's worth seeing, and I watched the whole thing, and uh, Josh Cordes don't have to bug me about it anymore, or you. And it was fine. And you got your uh, you got uh, imaginary heroes, and you watched right. it. And it was very good. And that was great. fine. Yeah. I would say imaginary heroes was better than this. But then again, that's just my opinion. Right. No. Huh? Well, I like City of God better, but then that's just uh, my. That's style. just your opinion. It's a little bit more. Uh, now, when exciting. I was over there the second time, looking for and finally finding City of God, the City of Damn God. I also happen to see. Uh, it's really amazing. There's no reason to go to a theater and see a movie anymore because after about two months, they're on DVD. Right. And they've been saying that they're releasing them earlier and earlier. In fact, Bear, Bearback uh, Mountain, yeah, Bearback Cowboy, is going to be March 7th. It's going to be on DVD in the stores. Oh boy. So, well, I know you'll be out there just <laughs> waiting. You'll be lined up at three in the morning waiting uh -huh. for them to open the door. I'm camping out. Right. Like Camp is the word, I think. Yeah. Camp. <laughs> so anyway, I see the constant gardener. And there has been so much hullabaloo. In fact, every list of all the top movies of the year yeah. and all, it's so great. And, bada -bee, bada -boop, bada -boop, and probably even some of our people out there. Now, first of all, the name is crap because the main character in the movie, Ralph Fien, whatever his name is. Yeah. What is his name? Ralph Fiennes. Fiennes? Rafe. Yeah. Sorry, Rafe. Oh, uh, Rafe Fiennes. Yeah. He's sure. Faker. Uh, yeah, he's in the gardening, and you see like three or four times in a movie, he's like digging in the garden, and, uh, and that, but not, I mean, it's just stupid. It's just a stupid name because it has nothing to do with the movie, you know. And the movie is about how they're poisoning all these people in Africa, the, the pharmaceutical companies, and they're experimenting on them with this, there's going to be this big worldwide epidemic of tuberculosis, and nobody knows about it except for the drug company, and the drug company's manufacturing. kind of reminds me of that uh, avian flu thing, you know, with that Theraflu that Donnie Rumsfeld's got all that stock in, you know. So anyway, that's the thing. I mean, if you think I'm giving away the plot, good because you know you want to save the money. And the guy's wife gets murdered along with her, uh, her uh, I don't know what you would call him, her black, uh, her, her chocolate complected uh, uh, Easter, assistant, Easter Bunny. Which we're supposed to think yeah, that he's the bunny, but the fact is, it turns out that he's gay. So they weren't doing anything anyway. 
but the husband is suspicious because they have like an open marriage. And she I loses see. the kid, and then she uh, go, goes off to us uh, somewhere. And, and, of course, I just got through watching City of God, which is about all these. And, again, I don't want to make it into a racial thing, but I will anyway. It's about all these brown and black kids. And then this movie, most of it is in Africa. And, uh, you know, and it yeah. depicts the, uh, I mean, and, and not that there's anything wrong with that, because uh, the world doesn't care about all these people that are dying in Africa, but these people are being used as guinea pigs and are being experimented on by the pharmaceuticals because it would cost them too much more to, like, remix the drug and, like, re, uh, you know, experiment with it. Uh -huh. And so they're trying it out on these people, unbeknownst to them, and to see if it does cure tuberculosis. And they can make billions of dollars from it. And, and, you know, first-rate spy game and uh, all, all these lines, what are the year's best movies and about this gripping thriller. There is nothing thrilling about it. There, there's no suspense. The acting, because it's mostly a British thing, is about as dry as sandpaper. Honest to God, how, how anybody consider this? If this is one of last year's best movies, then we should have just slept through the year, you know? Yeah, probably a good idea. Huh? Good God. Good golly, Miss Molly. Now, maybe some of you out there like the constant gardener, to which I say your taste is probably deep in your tush. I mean, it's, it's bad. So save your money. Okay. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, man, they butchered that Willy Wonka movie, man. They butchered what? The Willy Wonka movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. all about that. Oh, yeah, let's get that on there. All right, man. Okay. Now, Willy Wonka, is that like, uh, that, now, is he talking about the Johnny Depp movie? That is correct. Which is called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie right. and the Chocolate. Well, wasn't I ripping that uh, a couple weeks ago when I came back from um, wherever last time, from Europe last time? Oh, that was just pathetic. And you know how much I like Johnny Depp. You know, the aroma from this thing is getting so bad here. I may swoon uh -oh. any minute. Don't swoon. So you think I should open a window? Might not be a bad idea. <coughs> oh, there he goes. What? No, I'm, I'm serious. It's, it's in here. Didn't I tell you that when I first came in here this morning? Mm -hmm. It's only in this room. And it's not like any of the equipment is burning up or anything like that. It must mean my pewter. What? I said, how you doing? Uh, I would say... I'm dying over here. must be the pewter. Let me, let me take a sniff. Let me sniff it. All right. Sniff it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, seven, eight, <laughs> oh. oh, we got that uh, priest again. More priest story in Miami. A lot of bad priests out there doing bad altar boys. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. This is the Neil Rogers Show. <laughs> this is your brain. Oh, 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 oh. Any questions? No. Movie queen of only 19. She had some trouble. up constant gardener on the imdb it's got 7.6 out of 10 stars wow. and you know what that is just ridiculous i just opened a window up and it's about 100 times worse i think that's coming from outside okay he's that's inside a relief. the house what is it that's a relief anyway if it is coming from why outside. is that well no oh, it's then... not my computer because i'm sniffing around a computer and like maybe it did overheat or something but that's not where that aroma is it smells like iodine only yeah. in this room hmm Dun, 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 dun. I think somebody like stuck a uh, in here, okay? Now that we got like uh, this, uh, Stephen Harper is our uh, prime minister in Canada. I think that probably he and the Bush people got together and they stuck a long cube through the window or something. Man, I'm just gagging on it. 
I've never smelled anything like that in my life. It is so strong and so pungent. It's like if you're in the middle of a forest fire. Oh, look at that. No signal. My computer just went out. It's a computer, like I said. Uh-oh. It just died. Oh, no. Yeah. Hmm. Eric thinks you might have gotten a worm. Are you serious? Well, that's what he well, said. Well, why would it smell like that, then? Oh, I don't know. I know nothing so, about worms. Uh-oh. No, you better uh, confabulate with him about that, because if that's the case, I'm screwed, man. I'm screwed and tattooed and all a uh, uh, dude. Yeah, I better unplug that, baby. All right, one moment, please. Should have kept more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, thanks a lot, George. Why do you think that had anything to do with it? Viruses don't well, I never got no worm before. Explode. Is it just a coincidence that I removed all the Norton stuff uh, yesterday, and then between last night and today I get a worm? Quite I got possibly. a worm? Well, Neil's surf, got worms, you baby. You surf with Firefox. There's no reason you should be getting infected no, I with do not. anyway. You don't? No, I don't. Not no more, because on this one it doesn't make any difference. And oh, I use Alexa all the time. Poisonous evil Internet Explorer? Yes. Oh, jeez. No, so, uh, in other words, a worm would fry my computer? Is, that, is he telling I you the Emmys? No, Eric thinks it's the power supply. A worm should not fry your computer like that, set it on fire. Well, it's not on fire. I mean, that's getting a little carried it's away. It's funny that Eric thinks it's the power supply. Remember, I was telling you my story this morning. I had a similar smelly problem with a computer, and it was the power supply. Yeah. Because there's a little box that you plug Yeah, a little the black box. Into. That's the right. power supply? Yeah, that the cord gets plugged into right there at your computer. And uh, it tends to overheat, and, uh, and certainly if it overheats, it'll uh, shut your computer down. And it smells while it's overheating. That's what was happening. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Leave it to Eric to find my worm. Eric found the worm. He's got experience. Yeah, I'll bet. When you eat that much, you wind up getting, you have to get dewormed. Here's a fax from Rick who says, Man on fire should never have been redone. There's another one for you in Silence of the Lambs as well. You're going to have to give the pull result because I don't uh, right. have the ability. Silence of the Lambs the is not the one that was redone. It was Manhunter that was redone. Oh, Manhunter. Well, whatever. It was redone as Red Dragon. Oh, it says the original Silent Slams was called Manhunter. George no. did no more, yeah. Yeah, I do no more. And, uh, Red Dragon. It was Red Dragon. It was, it was Dragon. a remake of it was Dragon Manhunter, no more, I think. not Silence of the Lambs, which was only made one time. Well, what about Man on Fire? Never heard of it. So what do I, so what do, I do now? i got to get a new power. I, can I get a new power supply for this thing? or That's is it not uh, something that you will be able to do. I beg your pardon? I mean, you can get, like, a, your computer friend might know how to, how to switch those things out of there. I say might. But you certainly won't be able to do it. Not good. No. I might have to dig the old computer out of my closet and uh, hook that baby up. It's a good thing you got a lot of stuff in that closet. Oh, I'm, I'm, my closet's loaded. The only thing that's not in there is me. Oh, we're Tom Cruise. Tommy! You fairy! And Dan LaBastard! You fairy! Wow, that's unbelievable. So I told you, didn't I tell you when I came in here? So that's what that stench is. It's from the power supply. Leave it to Eric, our computer analyst, to know. And, man, it is. Oh, it's a good thing I got that window open. I'd probably be swooning. I'd be on the floor right now. It smells like uh, iodine, like real strong, like mercurochrome. When's the last time you used mercurochrome? Do people actually still use mercurochrome? Yeah, it's out there, but uh, a long time. The whole room is just permeated with that stench. Let me get my Lysol spray here. Ah! You hear it? Oh! Oh! Whoa. Man, there's a sneaky worm in Neil's studio. God, I sure hope it ain't attached to me. Good golly, Miss Molly. So how do you like that? The computer just died. It went out. I, I dash and plug it in again, huh? Oh, not for a while, but uh, give it a while. That's what, what I would have mean? to do with mine, the one that I was having problems with. Yeah, I'm how did you fix it? Eventually, I had the power supply replaced. Yeah. But up until that point, I would just have to uh, let it cool down. For, for how long? long? Unplug it, plug it back in. For how long? Like an hour. Oh, an hour? Well, yeah. I can handle that. And then plug it back in, and then it came back. Uh, t- and then t- how t- long t- would that stay before it started to uh, burn up again? A couple, three hours, and then it would overheat and shut down. Ah, jeez. So around noon, I'll uh, remind me at noon, okay? Set right. the timer. <laughs> and at noon, I'll plug that baby in again, see if I can start a good fire in here. Okay. That is really tragic, because I just bought this thing. This is such a great computer. And you're telling me, and Eric says that a worm, how could a worm do that? He's speculating. He's nowhere near your computer. No, but how could a worm worm make your power supply overheat? Only by causing your computer to run all kinds of processes for an extended period of time and thus uh, overworking it. Uh-huh. But if you were using it and it was working up until it shut down. It was working when I went to bed last right. night, and then uh, this morning I came in here and it was Probably not a worm. Although, stop using that Internet Explorer uh, business, man. i got to use that for Alexa, man. You don't have to. 
Alexa is not compatible with. Do we have to go through uh, this all no, over again? No, no, you're stuck on Alexa, but you don't. I'm have not to. stuck on Alexa because okay, I'll tell you what. You send all the bedtime stories from now on. How's no. that? No, you send them. Sounds awful. No, that sounds awful. Well, yeah, I bet it does. Well, if I don't have Alexa, man, it makes it a much lengthier process, and I'm too old and lazy to be doing that. And right, these people want to read their bedtime stories. Let me Dang tell you, it, Norton or no Norton? Yeah, that's what Jackie using, Gleason said. Using Internet Explorer. You're, it, it's a I haven't game. had a single problem on here. If I would have kept that Norton antivirus yeah. thing in there, I wouldn't be having this problem today. And somebody I know talked me out of it. Yeah. Oh, get all of that out of there. Whatever yeah. you get. I and I did, and all of a sudden, it must be just a coincidence right. that all of a sudden today the whole thing is frying itself. I haven't used Norton on any four of my computers. Yeah, well, guess what? My, my Norton is uh, was my lifesaver, yeah. little I realized, yeah. even though they kept bugging me. I'm sure. I think they're pissed off that I wouldn't uh, renew it, and as a result, they probably uh, they zapped me. Right. They're the ones writing the viruses, I'm convinced. For could be. Could be. They must have sent a worm through the line. Which, by the way, none of that stuff has anything to do with I have a feeling I see one crawling supply. around on the floor right now. Let me grab it. WQAM, Worm oh. Central. Hey, uh, yeah. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Um, yes, sir. It probably sounds that your power supply goes out all the time. That's the first thing that goes out on computers. What if does? Can, the power supply, like George saying. Yeah, but this is a uh, the computer's like three months old. Oh, that's fine. They, they go well, out it was brand new when it went. Oh, yeah, no. my, they're just not made very good. So what do I do um, now? Well, if it's gone, gone, you're SOL. But if it's still, like, overheating, turning off with the override inside, you could put, like, a fan on it or something and see if it'll pull down the the power supply so you could use it, you know, during your show. Put a fan on it? Yeah, the, behind it. Yeah. Get, yeah. One, get one of your fans to go up there and blow on it. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I'm sure we got plenty of people who could do that. And I got a pull for you. Yes, sir. Please. Um, how about movies that bombed, even though they had stars? And my recommendation is um, Tango and Cash with um, Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell. How what was it? Think? Tango and Cash. Oh, Tango and Cash. Oh, man. Sylvester <laughs> Stallone and Kurt Russell. Good like names, tang- but yeah. couldn't sell the ticket. <laughs> movies uh, that bombed, even with big stars. Well, there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't see the first Gardener, the, the constant Gardener. No. Good. Don't see it. <laughs> I won't waste my well, time. I saved, you, I saved you money, man. Don't see it. Thanks. Well, good luck on the power supply. Okay, thanks. So my power supply is yeah. up, Taurus. By the oh. way, Eric yes. uh, just typed in there. He was joking about the wicked worm. He just wanted to make a worm joke. Uh, but that's uh, got nothing to do with the power supply, which is obviously what This is. isn't time for joking, Mr. Fatso up there in Orlando. This is time to get real serious, okay? My power supply is frying. Oh, it's frying over here. And you're telling me that this is commonplace? And I can't go out and, like, buy, buy a new one just by itself? Is that what you're the, saying? Uh, the desktop that I had uh, bought in was yeah, you brand, bought in? brand new and right. not inexpensive, uh, you know, custom-built job. And, and within a month, I had to replace the power supply, which was obviously the cheap part of it. You're not computer. answering my question. In other words, I can go out and buy just a little black box one, of power supply One separate? can go to, say, one can. like CompUSA or another computer right. parts store right. and buy a power supply and swap it out if you know what you're doing. Well, what do you mean by that? It's not that hard. It's just, pl- I mean, I, I, any idiot can see where the damn thing plugs in. I, I've never done it, so I don't know what it entails. And guess what? Now that the, I pulled the plug on that thing uh, and I got the window open, that uh, smell's gone away. Mm-hmm. It's got to be that. You're over Must here. be just a coincidence, huh? It's cooking. Well, I hate burdening the audience with all these technical things because nah. it just very rarely happens here, and usually all of our technical problems are down there. So you probably feel better about this. Well, you've got your... My computer is frying. Right. It says I'm frying over here. Listen, you've got your friend there that's frying over here. here. That's what a maven, you? right? You've got your friend up there that's a... Uh, yes, that's uh, right. A computer... Uh, Wiz, yeah. Okay, ask him. He'll know more about whether it's... Kind throat is scratching. I oh, feel like no. I'm dying from it. Well, no, from that, uh, I'm telling you, that's, it's like uh, the chemicals burning in the sure. air and stuff is like that. Right. It's like releasing all these toxins. It's like you're going into that coal mine and not coming out. Anyway, your friend might be able to do it, might know how to do it. And what if he can? Well, might be able to do what? Switch your power supply out. If not, you just take the whole case to the computer store and have them do it. During the break, I'm going to go back there and look, because I think you're making it into a big simist. There's only, there are only two cords. There's one that plugs into the power, and there's one that plugs into the computer thing. And it's right. very, very, this is very simple, Listen, this one. Even a child I, could do it. But you don't understand. Inside, I don't understand. your black power cord plugs into a box that's inside your computer. That box then powers everything in your computer, and you've got all kinds of wires coming off of that box inside your computer, distributing yeah. power all over the place. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What's in the box? Power. Oh. 
Let's get to that next priest from Archdiocese of Miami charged with sex abuse after the break. I, I feel like we haven't started today. I feel like we're way off our feet because of this damn computer crap. You know, why can't they make stuff that lasts, that doesn't, like, fry and burn up? It's like the same with everything they make, man. Because it's probably made in China. You think? I don't know. Probably everything is. Hewlett Packard, baby. How can it be made in China? Because everything is. I'm looking. I'm looking for a little thing on there. It says made one, two, one, two, by strange little one, two, guys about two one, feet tall. One, two. I don't know. I can't find it on there. Well, this is an HP over here. I'll find it. During That's made in China. Probably. Uh-oh, look at that. Just in, 1,500 to 2,000 Fatah members gather in Gaza City, and they're waving that Fatah flag, and they're, like, uh, getting all bent out of shape. Too bad. Big deal. Guess what? You guys lost. Those free democratic elections, baby, not a good idea when you're dealing with people like killing everybody. Hey, the Emerald Coast is, Lord, that's the wrong spot. I See, you got me all screwed up now. I have There's no idea what hour I'm in. By huh? the way, Josh is back. Oh, I saw City of God. I heard your review. It was good. It was I'm happy about good. it, yeah. Well, there you go. Don't get the constant gardener. You didn't see that, did you? No, and I won't. Don't do it. Now, what do you think about my computer situation? What You're supposed to be the expert. Well, uh, I mean, all I from when I was listening, all I heard was there's a smell. Not not so much pneumonia that I got no, it unplugged. Off, right. Yeah, and so, the computer just went out by itself, so obviously mm-hmm. it was overheating. Right. That's what happened. Yeah. With mine. There was a smell, and it got overheating. Hot and it shut off. Shut off. Do you leave it on like 24 hours a day? Yes. Yeah. Which is bad. So now you're telling me that i got to get a new power supply, or is this one like, can I just let it cool off and it might be okay or not? Well, try it. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. Let it cool, and then if not, then yeah, you need to get a new one. But getting a new one, now George made it sound like it's really complicated. No, no, I said, I don't know. The hell you didn't. You said you got to do the bumpus in your box and the freepus on your nose. I said, ask your friend if he can swap it out. It might be easy enough for him to do. Right. But you're thinking, I can't do it. It really selling me pretty short on my computer uh, analyzation and my analytical abilities here, you know? It's not just a couple cords. It's a whole bunch that you have to uh, it is really? re-plug in there. Like I said, I'm throwing it out the window during the break. 11.15 already, my God. Let's get with it. Hey, if you want to see the most amazing fireworks stunt, speaking of fire, ever, then make plans to go to Pompano Park tomorrow, Saturday, January 28th, to see their unbelievable show called Hot to Trot. Australian trainer driver Vincent Silvestro and his amazing, amazing horse Hand Me Silver will race around the dark track, shooting off more than 2,000 rounds of fireworks as Silvestro drives the horse while standing on the shafts of his race bike, holding the reins in his teeth and marine flares in his hands. It's, you got to see it to believe it. Then there will be a spectacular infield fireworks display after the show. There will also be free mini horse rides, free face painting and live music, too. All of these things... All of these things. Coming up tomorrow, Saturday the 28th, hot to trot night at Pompano Park at 9 p.m. And like always, Pompano Park features free admission and free general parking every day. Live harness racing in the poker room is open every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Poker gets underway at noon in just about 44 minutes today, and live racing gets underway nightly, including tonight at 7.25 and a p.m. Don't forget, every Monday night at Pompano Park, a two-for-twenty-five-dollar dinner special at the Top of the Park restaurant. Every Wednesday night is dollar night for draft beer, sodas, hot dogs, and more. But especially, want to mark it down on your wrist right now for tomorrow night, the big hot-to-trot show at Pompano Park. Pompano Park with simulcasting every day and night, seven days a week, a block south of Atlantic Boulevard on Powerline Road. For the new racing schedule, 954-972-2000, or go on the Wicked Web at Pompano Park. Dot com. Watch out for a Miriam Tolan. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Every time you see It's the way God wants it to be. Wants to take a city and cover it in sweet. Ray Nagin can. Ray Nagin can. Ray Nagin can. Ray Nagin can because he wants to make New Orleans taste good. And I don't care what people are saying. He sounds like Jesse Jackson. We as black people. His comments are bizarre. Surely God is mad. There's the locals to a Willy Wonka bar. Shocking. Ray Nagin can. Ray Nagin can. Yes, Ray Nagin can. Ray Nagin can, cause he wants to make a new Orleans taste good. It's time for us to come together. It's time for us to rebuild a New Orleans, the one that should be uptown or wherever they are. This city will be chocolate, a chocolate New Orleans. He never takes the blame for anything he says. 
chocolate at the end of the day. Put that chocolate in some coffee and you'll pop off Juan Valdez. Ray Nagin can. Ray Nagin can. You know I can. Ray Nagin can because he wants to make New Orleans taste good. You can't have New Orleans no other way. It wouldn't be the, it says wouldn't be chocolate. It's 1121, so here's the poll results so far, and you're probably wondering, how you got the poll results? Hey, well, how you got the poll results? I plugged it in for long enough to print it out, and then I pulled the plug again. All right, very swift of you. Isn't that clever thinking? Sure enough. What movie should never have been remade? We got 771 votes. We got to get to 1,000 today, which I don't know how we're going to do it, because we like uh, aren't doing the show yet. Psycho 77, Planet of the Apes 69, War of the World 68, Pink Panther 63, The Longest Yard 58. Bad News Bears, 48. Herbie the Love Bug, 33. Roar Balls, 29. Ocean's 11, 21. The Blob, 20. Miracle on 34th Street, 19. Guess who's coming at dinner, 18. He's chocolate. Flight of the Phoenix, 17. Godzilla, 16. Shaft, 15. Manchurian Candidate and Amityville Horror and Stepford Wives, a dozen apiece. The Producers and the Stars, born 10 apiece. The Postman and uh, Always Rings Twice and Walking Tall, 9 apiece. Freaky Friday, Dawn of the Dead and the Time Machine Mon had 8. Seven for La Caja Fall and uh, The Birdcage. Dr. Doolittle, Gone in 60 Seconds, The House of Wax and the Fog. And seven for uh, Mr. Deeds Goes to uh, Wherever He Went and Mr. Meet Joe Black. Six for The Out-of-Towners and Cheaper by the Dozen. Five for Alfie, Dracula, When a Stranger Calls, Cape Fear. Four for Willy Wonka, Vanilla Sky. And three for uh, Twelve Angry Men Inherit the Wind, The Italian Job. A pair for The Hills Have Eyes, Assault on Precinct 13, and none for The Getaway. If anybody can call in and tell me why The Constant Gardener is a good movie, I'm all ears. I'm all ready to hear. i got my ears on. You got your ears on? Oh yeah, yeah. All Good. three of them. I'll uh, call Eric after the show, maybe at uh, the show, maybe. You can, but you, but you're. I think you're wrong. Well, I, I could just be. Look, I just. Well, you don't know this particular uh, thing now. That's you don't right. Know. That's well, I just I'm looked saying. at it, and it didn't look all that complicated to me. It just. Uh, I just know, you know about mine, and I had somebody else do it. So. You what? I had somebody else fix it rather than uh, you know just. Taking swings in the dark, you know. What all I, mean? I would like to know is that is the power supply a part that you can? I would assume. That you can go and buy separately. That's all I would like you to know about. You can buy it separately, yes. Well, thank you so yes. freaking much. <laughs> oh, God! And here's uh, here's more. Yes? They're, for s'mores? the most part, universal as, far, like s'mores as, as far as desktops go. They're what? They're more or less universal. A desktop power supply should oh, fit. I can that. probably go over this afternoon and pick one up. Right. So what's what's the problem? Why are you making such a big deal the out of this? Problem you just is, to aggravate, and then Eric with no, a warm business. The Eric's problem is with the warm. several wires plug into that power supply on the inside of your computer. That is not correct. All right. On the outside, you know, one black cord plugs into that box. On the inside, yes. that box is connected to several other wires that feed your hard drive, your CD-ROM, the yeah, motherboard. Yeah, but, but there's only one connection. There are two connections. There's the black cord. Look, the audience is going to go into a coma now if you start right. doing this, okay? All right. They're, they're, they're impaling themselves with sharp objects. They're taking, sure. their, they're taking their computer monitors and heaving them out the window. All right. Please. I'll uh, handle it. Trust All me. Right. I'll handle it. WQAM, hello. Lunch line. Hey, how's it going? Just wanted okay, to say. Uh, yeah, oh, I bet you did. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Gunner? WQAM, Hello. Sounded like his buddy was munching on something. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty in the Verizon and singular wire. You notice nobody's calling in about the Constant Gardener. Oh, one of the great movies of the year. It's a thriller. It's a chiller. No, it's not. It is so boring and ponderous. In fact, I had a call from Norma last night. I was in the middle of watching it. Thanks, by the way, for giving me a break uh, from the movie, Norma. And he said he made the mistake a few weeks ago going out and getting. They're doing the same thing because of all the hype. And he was watching it, and he was like, he was so pissed off, he actually burned it or threw it out the window or something because it was so bad. He heaved it. WQAM, hello. Good afternoon, sir. Or yes, good sir, morning, good evening. Whatever it is. Yes. <clears throat> I, think, um, I think you guys are talking about two totally different things, and, and you're not understanding what George is saying. I, I, I usually don't understand because I'm not speaking at no pick it upon him. Hola, this is Carlos. Um, he's, what he's. Talk, what he's what saying he to you, he's, he's absolutely me, correct. Please. It's yeah. the, the the box that he's talking about is inside the case. This is not the 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 little box that's outside that connects to the wall. That then oh, I see. it's inside the case, and if you yeah. plug the wrong wires, as he's talking about the power of the hard drive and the CD-ROM and all that good stuff, if you plug the wrong wi- wires into the power supply the wrong way, um, it will fry all kinds of stuff. So 
Um, I don't recommend doing that. Yeah, I'm not talking about the adapter box. Something Correct. Something you can see outside, if that's what you're thinking. Right. Yeah. It's inside. Inside. It's inside, inside the box? The inside the yes. computer case. Yes. Correct. Well, how the hell am I going to do that? Am I going to take this thing apart? That's yes. what, that's what has to be done. It. That's what I'm talking about. That's Correct. Right. Talking about something that you can do. I said, ah, don't be so oh hasty. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yep. my gosh. Ask oh your friend. Gosh. Ask an expert. Oh, my gosh. Well, he, yeah, but he's not a computer repairman. He's a programmer, which is far, a far cry from fixing uh, you, computers. You, you're going to have to take no that. More. You're going to have to take that, that, that case, take everything, all the plugs off of it and all that stuff, and schlep it down. Oh, through, my uh, gosh. <laughs> yep, you got it. Wow. Good luck, sir. Thanks for the bad news, Pat. Uh, I'm going to kill bye. myself during the next break. Thanks. Bye-bye. going to do like that uh, news bitch in Sarasota. <laughs> Turn my brains out right on the air. Well, just make sure you get the Are right Are you serious? Right. we got to go inside the, the case? Yeah, that's what I, I thought you knew what I was talking about. No. I'm talking about something that you can see from the outside. The black cord plugs into your computer, but what yeah. it's plugging into is a box that's inside your computer. Oh, that's no. The power so that's box. the thing that's frying inside? Right, and that distributes, redistributes that power to all of the different units in your computer, and all those little cables... I think it's uh, that in. Norton antivirus. I think uh, yeah, that's, that's what happened in there. Say that uh, it was that. Yeah. George, George is buying me a brand new computer now. And if you had any idea what it was like when my friend had to set this up for me because of the fact I got the two, uh, the network here, you know. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. If we got to go through that again, I think he'll probably kill himself or maybe shoot me. Oh, oh my fun. goodness. Well, son, fix it up there. He'll fix it for you. Like I said, I think it uh, just made a comeback. This is Neil Rogers. Oh, we're fine. This is 560 QAM. It's Friday, you bastard. <laughs> Life in Paris is nice and gentle, boring, on young tournaments and shuffleboard. Okay. If you think that's funny, play a little laugh on you, because if you're going to miss me, you bastards will miss me. That's right, you're going to miss me. Joy, joy, joy. I cashed my check and bought a Mercury. A white one with a great big bench seat. I got some earthmen for the rest that's waiting me. From all of your rakes and dingleberries. Watching TV poker and just organizing. I put barcodes on my baggy checkered pants. I may have one vein in the grave, and I got to buy my own pizza. But you're, you're gonna miss me. Now that poker can't miss me. Are you sure gonna miss me? It's 11.32 at QM. Look at that. There are burning fires out there. 1,500 to 2,000 Fatah members outside the Palestinian Legislative Council are pissed off and fired up. Hey, listen, you had an election. You guys lost. Yeah. You guys lost. And they're screaming, bada beep, bada boop, bada bop, kill the Israelis, bada beep, bada, whatever they're screaming. Here's a fax from Jason in Miami Lakes who says, George is right. Well, it's about time. Well, hey, twice you can go a year, to maybe. CompUSA. I beg your pardon. Twice a year, at least. I'm right. You can go to CompUSA or Best Buy. In fact, go to CompUSA. You have to go on a manhunt for help at Best Buy. I've been on a manhunt for years. And the power supply costs thirty to fifty dollars. If you just bought that computer a few months ago, you'll need an ATX power supply to fit on the newer computers. I hope this can help. Well, thanks, Jason, in my relation, but see, that doesn't sound like it's something you need to open up the box for. It does. Trust me. It doesn't sound like the right price either. No. Really? It's, well, it's all in watts, so you want to get a, you know. If you Better. just bought that, I'm sure it's under warranty. Just take it back to where you got it and say, look, man, the power supply blew up. Yeah. There's overheating. Oh, boy. And then what? And they'll swap it out for you. They should. If it's a they'll new swap computer. it out for me? What is it? It's not even three months old, is it? No. no but no. then, then if they're, but regardless, if they're going to give me a new one, then I'm going to have to go through the same gyrations and set it up all over again as the first time. I am going to no, kill myself this weekend. No, they shouldn't have to do that In at fact, all. I'm going to Niagara Falls. I'm going to, like, jump over the falls. What? They shouldn't have to do that at all. Though sometimes, just to be bastards, they, uh, they race stuff. No, you just said they'll swap it out for you. What, not what does the computer, that mean? the power supply. Oh, the power supply. Yeah. And how long would that take? Well, it'll take five minutes, and they'll probably take three days. I see. 
Well, I always got that other one as a backup. That's okay, right. I got the other one. Not it's always good to have a spare. And anyway. I'll take, oh, I got the whole closet full of them. And I'll take care of those stories for tomorrow because I'm such a great guy. Two o'clock, right. I'll call Eric. I'll uh, send uh, Josh a bunch of crap. Anyway, if I can get to those, it's already 11.34, and I feel like we haven't even yeah, started Carl, why yet. Why are you dawdling today? Because I feel like it. Before <laughs> you know it, it'll be 2 o'clock. We won't even have done anything yet. Hey, not only that, but come out to the Marlins Select to see tomorrow at Dolphin Stadium from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. during these four hours tomorrow. You can meet Don Trell Willis between 10 and noon. He's the only guy you'll recognize on the team anymore. And you can lock in tickets for the Red Sox before individual tickets go on sale. Plus, you can register to win a private luxury suite for opening day. That's Marlins Select to see tomorrow at Dolphin Stadium, 10 uh, to 2. Now, here's our. Now, how's uh, Josh's dad's uh, foot doing? Is it leg, his knee? What is it? It's leg. What is it? Uh, he's getting it scoped, basically. He's got uh, some blood clots and stuff. Oh, I see. Well, that's not a big deal, right? I mean, no, you got to no, get him out. Well, he'll be all right. He'll be home not today. Not like he's dying or something. No, please. Well, it's not like I asked an insensitive question. You would have answered, oh, he just, we just buried him. Or, yeah, that would have been bad. <laughs> Ex-priest from Archdiocese of Miami charged with sex abuse. More of this stuff again. Look at the maniacs there. Look at the fires they're starting over there in Palestine or wherever that is. It's a bonfire, a bonfire. Oh, fire. yeah. Looks like a, uh, that's just a tailgate party. Look at those maniacs. Got all these fires going in there, marching around, and but it be but it be way better. You know, Hamas is going to make them look bad. I wonder why they feel like that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what, what can I tell you? A former Archdiocese of Miami priest was arrested on charges he sexually abused a young boy he befriended a decade ago at his church. Oh, this is quite a convoluted story. The BSO yesterday arrested a former priest who had served parishes in South Florida for three decades on charges he sexually abused a young boy. But that's only the beginning of the story. The Reverend Neil Doherty, 62, was the first Catholic priest in the Archdiocese of Miami to be charged with sexual battery on a minor younger than 12. Don't ever put those batteries on a kid younger than 12. Right. Once uh, used, by the way, by Sally Fitz, which makes it even less uh, appetizing. Alleged victims of Doherty have been coming forward ever since the Catholic Church's sex abuse scandal erupted in Boston in 2002. Broward authorities began investigating the latest case after the victim filed a lawsuit against the Archdiocese of Miami, accusing it of keeping the priest in a Margate parish where he allegedly doped and raped the victim, now 19, over a five-year period beginning in 1996. The suit filed against the Archdiocese in September, which seeks $25 million in damages, offers evidence that church leaders were aware of earlier sex abuse allegations against Doherty, yet apparently did nothing to protect children from him. The family is relieved that this man is off the streets and feels the community is finally safe from him after three decades of terror, said Jeffrey Herman, the Miami-based attorney for the alleged victim. Herman represents five men who claimed Doherty molested them while he was a priest. We are encouraged that the legal system is working to protect the community, Herman said. Only one Catholic priest, Reverend Trevor Smith, who worked at a North Miami nursing home, has been charged and convicted of sexually assaulting a child in South Florida. Doherty, whose three decades of service to Broward and Dave Parishes included serving as director of vocations for the Archdiocese, was placed on administrative leave in April of 2002. The Archdiocese's knowledge of Doherty's past pedophilia surfaced in a 2003 memorandum by the BSO in which a sex crimes prosecutor disclosed a 94 statement with a student who had been enrolled at Chaminade High School in Hollywood decades earlier. A lawsuit filed in that case resulted in a $50,000 settlement of payoff by the Archdiocese. In the latest uh, case... The unidentified alleged victim claims the lawsuit that Doherty, then a priest at Margate's St. Vincent's Church, sexually abused him starting in 96 when he was 10 years old. Under Florida law, there is no statute of limitations if the victim is younger than 12. If he's convicted, Doherty, the charges could carry a life sentence. And then we can get that guy that uh, they just arrested for uh, Father Gagan and throw him in there with him. Maybe he's for hire. In dozens of similar uh, criminal investigations involving uh, South Florida Catholic priests, the age limit's been a barrier because alleged victims were 12 or older, you know, like 13. According to the lawsuit, Doherty befriended the boy, identified only as John Doe, 22, when he was 8 or 9 years old after meeting him at St. Vincent's. The priest encouraged the boy to attend Mass and confessions in the mid-90s. One day, uh, the youngster told Doherty he had been involved in a fight at school. Doherty encouraged the victim to start smoking pot. Many of the sex acts, which occurred between 96 and 2000, happened while John Doe was unconscious or semi-conscious from binging on drugs and booze. Oh, it sounds like that Jesus juice. That's always a good scam. More than two years ago, a former student at Fort Lauderdale St. Anthony Catholic School alleged in a suit that when he was 12 years old, Doherty plied him with prescription drugs and raped at him more than a dozen times. These assaults, assaults allegedly took place in 76 at the priest's mother's home, your mama, in a hotel room and an apartment beyond the parishioner's house. That lawsuit filed in Broward Circuit Court in September 2003 named the school and archdiocese as defendants, but not Doherty. 
A month later, the BSO released its findings on Doherty after a 17-month investigation of a separate incident in which the priest was accused of drugging and sexually abusing a 17-year-old Chaminade senior in 78. Uh, it, just, it just goes on and on. And hey, you know something? They still haven't even scratched the tip of the iceberg. They haven't scratched it yet. Not no. even scratched it. And, of course, uh, how can you scratch it when it's back under the carpet again? They did a really right. beautiful job of that. They caressed it a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. They made a big timacy about it for a couple of minutes, and then that was the end of that. No more. Five, I feel like naked without that something on that monitor. Oh, I, know. You know? I know how you feel. Oh, my God. I feel like uh, unclean. Although I will say this, it sure smells a lot better in here. That? No, that, that's toxic crap that's coming out of there. It's like burning metal and wire. Is it really? And, I don't know what it is. Well, I mean, what would cause It's like burning up in there, right? It's cooking. Whatever it's cooking? It is, it's in there, Maybe yeah. I can throw a little pasta in there, too. So you're five, six, seven, oh, five, sixty, pound five, sixty on the Verizon Singular Wireless Lines. On computer repair. Let's get Davey Gravy line for at your service. WQIM, hello. Uncle Neil, how are you? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, I had a question for you, and, and George, you might remember the name. It's right on my tip, my tongue, too. Uh, the movie with Ashton Kusher and uh, Bernie Mac. And what? And Bernie Mac. Ashton Kusher, he, he's with the black girl. Oh, 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 oh. I think that's uh, Look Who's Coming to Dinner, isn't it? Something like that. But Guess Who's Coming movie. to Dinner, right. That's a remake of an original one where it used to be the... Spencer Tracy, right. Sidney Poitier, Catherine Hepburn, right? Oh, no, and that was, that's why it's on our list. People, how could you do that? I mean, Ashton Coochie yeah. Coo is Spencer is that on, Tracy? Is that on the poll already? No, no, they it just switched is, yes. the white guy showing up with a black girl this time. Well, I apologize because I just tuned in. And, uh, Don't I apologize. Just, Don't be sorry. Well, listen, all i got to tell you is keep the bars are so... They're all for me! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I think what he was really trying to say was... Do, 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 do. This is Neil Rogers. This is 562 AM. Neil, God. Rising up back on the street. Took my time, took my chances Went the distance, now I'm back on my feet Just a man and his will to survive It's the eye of the tiger, it's the thrill of the fight Rising up to the challenge of our rival And the last known survivor stalks his prey in the night And his fortune must always be Eye of the tiger Eleven forty six, fourteen till two. We got uh, Geldy again from the Bankianta Center in anticipation of that big Panther win against the Devils tonight. Anybody buying that? Anybody going to be there? No. All those Devil fans will be there. You know, I just plugged that thing in again, and I can already. Uh, that thing is frying inside. Yeah, that's got to be the uh, the box inside. Oh boy, your power box. Well, I did send uh, Josh one story so far. Ooh, I'm thinking that's about it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh no, I got this may never work again. So I got to make up for like the next several days, send about a hundred. And I got the poll here, 822. We'll make a 1,000 today in spite of all this uh, crap going on, uh, for which we apologize profusely. Do you believe us? No. No, we don't mean it anyway. And especially when you look at the phone, you see only line 9 is ringing. You know that's going to be a very brief call. Can you? How much you want to bet? What are the odds? Uh, 3 to 5? Uh, I ain't taking that action. 1 to 9 in the morning line? WQAM, hello. QAM. Hey, Pally, how you doing? Okay. How's it up there in Toronto? It's uh, sunny and uh, lovely. Great. My family was from Perth, so that's uh, up a little northeast of you guys. Well, um, I've never heard of it. I've heard of Perth, Australia. No, Perth, uh, Canada. It's up Perth, there. Ontario? Perth, Ontario? Perth, it's... Uh, it's What's around? It's up there. Uh, yeah, Ontario province. Um, listen, on that uh, power supply, it's easy yes. to fix, but they're, they're right. You have to go into the box, okay? Ah. There's like six or eight screws outside of it. Um, they're, they're small screws, like number one Phillips. You've got to take them out mm-hmm. and you this down? pull it down there. And um, the power supplies are, are – but take it with you. There's like two screws that hold it in, and there's like four wires that come out of it. And you can't get confused because they only plug into certain receptacles in there. That's good to and it's the same size, okay? It's like, num- eight, n- it's like three wires into this one, four wires into this one, five wires into this one. Oh. They're not that hard to fix. It's, oh, my I've God. I've chased uh, and changed like t- four of them and, and my computers, and it's not that hard. But take the original that you have 
to wherever computer store you go, CompUSA, yeah. Canada, whatever uh -huh. they have up there. I don't know. But uh, only to match it up and maybe get a little bigger one. That's number one. Number two, isn't this a, this a three month old computer, HP? Yeah. It should be covered under warranty. Yeah, it should be. It, it is. is. Take the yeah, whole I'm not going to monkey with it. I'm going to take right. it back in there and say, hey, you guys deal with it. Take and it. make them, uh, if they can't give you one right away uh, or fix it right away, hey, make them pay for whatever it costs you. Like, all right, if you're costing me time and money. I have to get somebody out here to set it up yeah, and all luck. this other stuff. Charge them. Hey, they take care of it. Right yeah, good luck but to me. These, these are Canadians, eh? These are not. Uh, <laughs> You know, like your what? generous... Yeah, like, uh, like no, Floridians, yeah. Pensrifts. <laughs> yeah, Floridians, yeah. Well, I'm a Floridian. I'm moving up to uh, Pennsylvania, uh, my wife's hometown up there. And uh, she used, and I said, we were from Perth, Canada, which is northeast of where you are. Uh, and uh, it's uh, going to be a great time. We're getting out of here in the next year. Yeah. Okay, pal, good luck to you. But Congratulations. Listen, it's not that hard to change it. But make, I'm not diddling with it. I'm taking it in there. It's, it's under warranty. I'm going to let them out because I don't want to I mess said. it up. Hey, do that, but it, it, it's only like eight screws. Pull it out. Take the power box out. There's like four wires that come off of it. And okay. you can't mismatch them because they plug into like, you know, separate. Or okay, thanks, Pally. Thanks. At, he was going through the whole thing <laughs> again. <laughs> You were bleeding from the first time. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was worried about. I mean, I'm starting to feel like I'm hearing Celine Dion music in hell. <laughs> Why did he keep saying Perth, Canada? Where the hell is Perth? I don't know. We can look it up. People don't say Perth, Canada. It's like uh, Perth, Ontario or Perth. Right. Uh, Perth uh, and uh, I wonder if you carry a Perth. A little pink one like the Queen. 5670560. Oh, I mean, I, well, didn't I just get through saying I'm taking the whole thing in there? I think LeBastard right. put him up to that call. That must have been it. That's got to be. That was Danny Labastard's buddy. It's Perth, Ontario. Is it really? Yeah. Well, how come he didn't know that? If you're from there, wouldn't you know what Perth's like saying, I'm from Rochester. Well, what state is that in? Oh, I'm just Rochester, USA. Right. Hey, what? What, what does that mean? You know, well, he's confused. Maybe Rochester, he's from uh, North America. Maybe he's from Alakawana. WQAM, hello. Hey. Or oh, I don't want to. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. If you are pulled, that airplane has gone to the water. I beg your pardon? You know that airplane that fell into the water here? What is this man talking about? I don't know. I was hoping you tell me. Talking about your pole, man. Yeah. Airplane? Yeah. Didn't you hear the story? It was like about two weeks ago. What story was that? Airplane in the water? This guy just woke the up airplane, from something. The airplane that fell in the water, man. <laughs> Go back to bed, son. Go back to bed. <laughs> All right. Call us when you. I, I mean, I heard the words coming the out of there. I just, I thought I was maybe putting them together in the wrong order. No man, that was your plan. Winkle fell in the water. Well, that should never been remade. You know, that was that was pretty scary the first time. Yeah. WQAM, hello. QAM. Neil. Not, not lying. Yes, sir. Sounds like you got the bird flu in your computer. Yeah, they got the uh, bird flu. The birds in it. You should send uh, the beat from South Africa up there. WQAM, hello. QAM. Oh, it's like Neil. Speaking. Neil, God. Yes, sir. I have a question to ask you. Uh -huh. Back during the hurricane, when you were um, on vacation, I think, and George was doing the show, you guys did a bit where it was sort of like a little song and how to be weird. Or something like that. I laughed so friggin' hard, I that's cracked strange. my ribs. Oh, what that's strange? It? Yeah. Oh. May I please have it again? You Can you have it again, or do you want to hear it again? Ladies and gentlemen, again. If I could offer only one tip for the future. Act strange, and people will leave you alone. The rest of my advice has no basis more reliable than my own meandering experience. Put a slinky around your neck and try to walk downstairs backwards head first. Sit naked in a large bowl of Rice Krispies and sing feelings while the kernels go snap, crackle, and pop. Go up to a ticket booth and try to stick your head through the hole where they say how much. Lick a stranger. Tell them you're from Bosnia and your country. It's a sign of respect. Take lots of pills. One of them might work. Occasionally ask a stranger if they've heard anything from Lewis. Be annoying. 
During an IRS audit, staple the guy's hand to his desk. Moon, a funeral. Play go fetch with a seeing eye dog while he's working. Run naked through a mall yelling, Killer bees, killer bees. Say the word titty without smiling. Try to figure out who said Paulie Shore should star in movies. Don't be surprised if it's the same guy who said John Gacy should work with kids. Ask an old lady if you can carry her groceries and try to make a run for it. Disappear for great lengths of time. Try to touch your forehead with your tongue. It may not work, but many women will appreciate the effort. At a high school reunion, tell your old English teacher that your dog's still eating your homework. Ask Mark McGuire if he'll take a million dollars for one of his balls. Try to find the secret to Caratop's success. Understand your conception was an accident, that your parents got wasted and wanted a few more laughs before they passed out. Try not to lose your finger in your nose. Take up Bob Costas and toss him on the lawn next door. Go on a car trip with Bob Costas and force him to stay in his car seat. Try to dribble Bob Costas. Ask all your friends and family for forgiveness. Knowing you, you've done some crap that's really pissed them off. Wish no ill will to anyone, unless you don't like them. Then screw them, they're on their own. Realize anyone who says they're completely happy are completely full of crap. Ask a hell's angel if he's a woman, or has he always walked like that? Understand that there are bad people in the world, and you may just be one of them. Sniff an old lady. Imagine Gomer Pyle in a gay bar trying to get lucky. Do this without laughing. Find what's left of your innocence. Understand it, embrace it, protect it, and every so often, take it out for a nice nosh. Care enough not to care. Hum while you eat. Act strange, and people will leave you alone. Well, I sure accomplished a lot during that break, man. I got the, the poll printed out. We got 822 votes, but I'm not going to read it because it's ponderous. And I sent you two or three more stories. Fantastic. But I unplugged it real fast because, man, it just just like five minutes of that thing being uh, plugged back in there, that, that just fills this room with that nice, that unctuous, man, all those chemicals are like frying in the air and I'm dying over here. Thank God I got the window open. I'd be swooning. Brother. So George says, uh, throw it out the window. George also says that he ran to the bathroom because he had to take a deuce. Well, you know something? There you go. And that's because God is punishing him for having me turn that Norton uh, antivirus stuff. I guarantee you that's what had nothing to do with it, but it would just lay a guilt trip. Don't you think? Sure, why not? It didn't no. have anything to do with it, but I hey. know that. But it sure sounds good. And then he's trying to tell me because I used Explorer that that's why this happened. Which, by the way, I happen to like Norton, but, you know, I guess that's... I don't like the fact that it keeps popping up on here and bugging me like 80 million times. Well, it, it, it doesn't do Well, anything. I have it. Mine doesn't pop up. Well, mine does. Well, your subscription is expired. Well, you know, when you buy a new computer, it's already on there. And then you get a free, like, two or three months, and then they want you to keep, uh, you know, to pay for it. Well, I get it through this mighty fine radio station. What do you mean by that? Norton? Yeah. Yeah, the engineers. The engineers what? Book me up at the Norton. I've got to pay for it. How the hell do they do that? What do you mean? Got... How, can they, how come they're hooking they you up and they ain't hooking me up? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, bastards. Well, that's because they hate me like poison. Well, guess what? 11.57 at QAM. This is Neil Rogers. This is 5.16 a.m. This is Mark Morgan. It's the 12 to 1 hour on QAM. Hey, Morality. With this week installment of... Now, see here. <laughs> Now, see here. Pants are essential to a man's attire. Now, I, I, I got all kinds of things in my pants. You know, Martians, and, 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 and dingleberries, and who knows what I'll find in there next. You know, many things have been said about my pants. Now, I may not be wearing any now, but that's only causing a flurry of excitement. I sold them. Who did more for pants? Fred Moitz or James Coco? Come on. And another thing. Who did more for hygiene? Summer's Eve or Mr. Whipple? And I think you know the answer to that one. <laughs> and 
And while I'm on the subject of sports, who did more for the Dolphins' offense? Slow-mo Rosenthal or Mr. Kitzel? Let, let me give you something else to put in your pink pipe to smoke. Who did more for Glade Mist bathroom spray? Jorge Fagadorn Rodriguez or uh, Brian Dennehy? Eh? Damn on. You know where uh, you could insert the sound effects here. If Joyce would only die. Wait, where did you go? You can't go nowhere. I'm not. The... <laughs> there he goes. He just got chopped. Anyway, the good news is here's one of the great things uh, about uh, having a great memory. Yeah. And I just found my receipt. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't have kept my receipt. That'd be uh, SOL, right? That's important. I got my receipt, and guess what the date is? I bought this piece of crap. I mean, this fine piece of merchandise made in Mexico. I don't know, January. No, November 22. So that's like just barely over two months. Right, yeah. And the power supply fries? Oh, now, if you would have told me to shut the thing off every day, it might have lasted another I week. I thought we had that discussion, but I could be wrong. What? Well, right. I shut everything else off in here every day, right. pretty much, but uh, computers, I figure you can keep no. them on. Like, like all the other computers on here stay on all the time. All things have a lifespan. Yeah. And the more you use it or the more it's on. Yeah, but two months? Break. Two months? It shouldn't. That cheap piece of crap, it should not have a fried egg. Yeah, by a bunch of little uh, beaners down there probably with eating those mushy beans in Mexico somewhere. No doubt. Oh, my God. Probably killing a whole bunch of American tourists. Well, in the meantime, they're sticking in a hard... And November 22nd till January 27th. That is pretty uh, crappy. Now, when I take this in there, because I don't have the box. I never keep the box because I'm an eternal optimist. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, I mean, if you keep the box, that means you feed, you're going to have to take it back. So I never That's do right. that. Well, it won't so break until, no you, until you throw the box out. It won't break. Well, I already threw the box okay. out. See? But do I also have to take that black power supply cord thing with it, too, or, or what? No, just take, unplug everything from just it. Just take the box. And just take the big box. Well, it's not that big of a box, thank well, God. Whatever, I mean, whatever even it is. a manly man like me couldn't All slip a big box. Right. Just a small little box. That GOP sets up showdown over Alito. The Senate's top Republican decided yesterday to force a showdown on Supreme Court nominee Sam Alito early next week with the two Democratic senators from Massachusetts pushing to block a vote. You go, Kerry. You go, Ted. Senate Majority Leader Bill Fist filed a motion to cut off debate on the Alito nomination after his Democratic counterpart, Minority Leader Harry Reid, no relation to Greg, objected to a move by GOP leaders to schedule a final vote on his confirmation Monday afternoon. First, fifth motion, which requires 60 votes under Senate rules, will come up for a vote at 4.30 Monday afternoon. If successful, senators will then vote on the leader's nomination at 11 o'clock Tuesday morning with a simple majority of 51 votes needed for approval, and then you can kiss all your freedoms goodbye. Bye-bye! Unless you're a rich white guy with a lot of cash. Bye-bye! First move came as Senator John Kerry of Massachusetts with lobbying his Democratic colleagues to filibuster the Alito nomination, an uphill fight given that none of the chamber's 55 Republicans have opposed his confirmation and three Democrats are on record supporting it. Judge Alito's confirmation would be an ideological coup on the Supreme Court, Kerry said in a written statement. We can't afford to see the court swing vote, just as Sandra Day O'Connor replaced with a far-right ideologue like Samuel Alito, Kerry said. How do you like that? You know what else he said? What? Oh. How do you like that? The White House expressed confidence that Alito supporters had the 60 votes needed to cut off a filibuster and maneuver allowed under Senate rules to block a vote by extending debate indefinitely. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah, they bring in Denise Potvin. Bop, 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 like that. Mm-hmm. And then they bring in Phil Simms when he gets tired. Bop, 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 like, and then they bring in Rimmer. Bop, 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 and it never stops. Earlier Thursday, Senate Minority Whip Dick Durbin, who's in charge of rounding up his colleagues for key votes, also played down the possibility of a filibuster, though he said no decision had been made. One of the first responsibilities of someone in Congress is to learn how to count, the Illinois Democrats said. Having made a count, I've come to the conclusion it's highly unlikely that a filibuster would succeed. Two Democrats announced Thursday that they would vote for the 55-year-old Alito, Senator Robert Byrd of West Virginia, you old turd, and Senator Tim Johnson of South Dakota. Oh, boy. Both represent states that Bush carried in the 2004 presidential election. Bobby Byrd. What, what a turd. In a speech on the Senate floor, Byrd, the longest-serving Democrat in the Senate, just turned 172, said he refused simply to toe the party line when it comes to Supreme Court justices. My considered judgment leads me to believe Alito to be an honorable man, a man who loves his country, loves his constitution, loves his swastika, and a man who will give of his best, said Byrd, who faces re-election in November. Can we really ask for more? 
Johnson said that while he was troubled by some of Alito's views, I can't accept an argument that his views are so radical that the Senate is justified in denying his confirmation. He said he would also oppose any filibuster with the nomination. The White House believes the Alito supporters have the 60 votes they need to block any filibuster. Uh, but if you put a boop, that's it. There it goes. So get ready to kiss your ass goodbye. Yeah, I already did. Get ready to kiss Hamas goodbye. That's what they're trying to do over there in uh, Palestine. I thought there was no Palestine. Well, they, whatever they are. All them homeless or wandering uh, Arabs. There's the Fatah rally. Look at that. They're throwing like stale halava at the, uh, at the Hamas people. And you know what the Hamas people are doing back? Like, just like that. They're gathering, baby, a tense demonstration in Gaza City, or as they say, Gaza City. Gaza. That's like the uh, Brits and the uh, Canadians do that, and the Aussies. Gaza. Mazda. Oh, God, I hate that. Miami. No, that's uh, old Jews, like Irv Schindler. Miami Beach, Miami. 5670560. Oh, There's a real nasty looking Palestinian with an Uzi, man. He ain't going to put up with no crap. He's using an Uzi. Oh, I see all of them got Uzis. Look at that. They all, they all, they all got some kind of a piece. And peace is not what they want. They're, like, they're all just a bunch of crazy people. The Arabs, the Israelis, just uh, get, get, get out of our life. Get out of our face. Go away. Go away already. And by the way, nice headgear, though. Look at that. Is that a mood ring or a shmata? It's a foul mood ring. WQAM, hello. Yeah. Uh, Neil? And, and they get upset when you say raghead? Yes, sir. Yeah, Neil. You read, uh, read an article about the... Yeah, uh, yeah. WQAM, hello. QAM. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Pretty good. So, you're with this Alito conversation and, you know, besides the conversation? media... Conversation? Yeah. <laughs> but besides the media spinning that, you know, they're spinning Iran, Tehran, enriched uranium without even bringing up the point that was already discussed. If you remember, the leader that was, that was voted in in Iran was actually implemented as being involved with the, the hostage-taking. Yeah, implicated and, and implemented, right. Exactly, and you right. know, but we'll keep doing the whole same same dance with enriched uranium, nuclear bombs. Yeah. I mean, then we can it, then we can move our uh, troops right across the border from Iraq right into Iran. You're right, and if the Democrats, I mean, this is the the final gas. If the Democrats don't, I'm not expecting. Even if they do filibuster, I'm not, you know. But if they don't filibuster. I mean, that's it. The, 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 their hands are around our throat. That's the last gasp. And if people want to do something, just like you just read, go to John Kerry's website and sign that online petition, even if it may not, you know. At yeah. least it's something. Go to Kerry, John Kerry. I would also start practicing uh, making this sound. <laughs> like that. Yeah, I know, Neil. I know. He's not, I don't, you know, he's not my man, but at least he's doing something right now. Yeah. At least, at least hey. he's uh, doing some political posturing for us now anyway. Thanks a lot, yeah. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Could, could you play President uh, Dumb Schmidt for me, man? Okay, no problem. Later. You got it. Say goodbye. As long as you say goodbye, I promise. Hamas victory. They went ahead fair elections, and first mm -hmm. they were all celebrating off Fatah one and uh, but it be and everything was fine. And then all of a sudden, when they found out they lost, oh, woe is us! And this was like a bunch of crap. And but it be but it Yeah, right. Your mama. I think it's uh, almost amusing because, quite frankly, who gives a damn about them uh, ragheads and those uh, getchkis? The whole thing over there. If the rest of the world would just stop, there ain't no oil in Israel. Last time I checked, is there? No. No. Out there in the middle of their uh, barren desert. So who the hell gives a crap? All the Jews can move to Amsterdam, okay, and open up a whorehouse or something. Just get out of there already. Stop with a, enough with a baloney. It's not even kosher, for Christ's sakes. Five, six, well, I got such a headache from inhaling all of it. Probably going to, like, die from that. No, don't do that. Then I can sue Hewlett Packard and all them little Mexicans that made that computer. Two months and my power supply burns out. Now, that's crap. Yeah, and I've been raving about what a great uh, computer this is, and which it right. is uh, when it works, but, you know. Now, what, why is that? It could have been faulty from the beginning, which was probably the case with mine. Yeah. So, because, I mean, I didn't have mine for a month before I had to replace it. Then how long did it take for them to um, fix, it, fix it for you? Six months. Get out. All right. No, no, it's, seriously, it's how, something that someone could do in five minutes. And how long did it take? Don't be joking when you said six I had, months. I had a friend do it, so it took oh, like I a week. I gave it to him, and a week later I got it back. It took a week? Oh, well, I don't want to have to hook up the old crappy computer over here. It'll probably take a month. Get out of here. I don't know. A month? I don't know. 
It's yeah, just yeah. like getting your car done. There's how long it actually takes and how long they actually take to do Before it. Before they get around to doing right. it. Right, exactly. Posking around so with put it. it on a shelf with a number on it, and we'll get to it as soon as we're done with these uh, five others that are ahead well, of Well, your mama, I- I'll go there and burn their place down. How do you like that? I'll put a French-Canadian flag on their store, and then somebody else will burn it down. Right, WQAM, go. hello. QAM. W2AM, hello. Is it Neil? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, it, uh, the, uh, what? what? <laughs> yeah. WQAM, hello. Hello, Neil? Yes. How you doing? Pretty good. These people are just uh, lost, man. They're like, uh, give them a compass and a road map. Still wouldn't help. <laughs> yeah, I had a... Uh... I had Norton or McAfee or whatever it was in my computer, and of course I didn't subscribe to it. So uh, it about it took about a month to get all kind of viruses and, and diseases in my computer, so it all crashed. So I had to reboot my whole system, and I called uh, Microsoft to help walk me through it. And yeah. I didn't have no virus protection, no nothing, so I had to dump everything. And he gave me a website, uh, DSVS, Dedicated Viware Virus uh, Support, or something like that. DSVS, mm-hmm. and it's the Microsoft website's got, like, uh, uh, firewalls, pop-up blockers, and it's all free. You don't have to subscribe to nothing. It updates every time you turn on your computer. And it's been about a year now, and I've never had any pop-ups, no spyware, no viruses, no nothing. And it's freaking great, much better than McAfee, you know, because nobody ever subscribes to it. Every five seconds, you get that little pop-up at the bottom. Yeah, oh, man, and I want to say, that Norton dump, thing, I just about wanted to, like, throw this thing out the window. Dump that thing, throw it right out. And it's like uh, APG or AVN or something on the DSVS website, and, and it, up, it updates every time you turn your computer on. It'll log on for a second, shut right off, and it stays on down at the bottom of the screen, you know. And I've never had a problem, and, and McAfee sucks. Okay, thanks, Kelly. <laughs> what was he really trying to tell us? McAfee sucks. Oh, okay. Well, we don't want to get too personal. 1213 at 560 WQM. We got uh, Bialdi at the Bank Yenta Center at uh, 2 o'clock. Getting ready for that big game. We love the Panthers. They blow every game. And then we got the Mad Dog from Hooters and Doral at 4. Panther people at 7. The Panthers and the Devils with Geldy and Silly Ass Red Deer Randy uh, Moeller at 7.30, followed by the Eddie Kaplan Show. And then over the weekend, well. Hey, resolve yourself to a better night's sleep in 2006 by calling 1 800 Mattress right now, right as I speak, while you're thinking about it. Nothing's got a bigger impact on your daily health, your well-being, and productivity than a good night's sleep. And you can get one as soon as tonight from Dollar Mattress by calling 1-800-MATTRESS right now. If your mattress is more than 10 years old or it's noticeably sagging or lumpy, it's time for a brand new one. Choose from a complete line of Sealy, Serta, Simmons, King Coral, Tempur-Pedic, Stearns, and Bananas Foster, too. Dollar Mattress takes same-day orders all day long from Kendall to Stewart from Palm Beach to Fort Myers. And amazingly enough, they still let you pick the date. And to our delivery window when you want that mattress delivered, like 11 to 1, noon to 2, 1 to 3, 2.30 to 4.30, etc. And they show up on time 99.7% of the time. I love Dollar Mattress. I've used them for years, and you've got to be crazy to buy yourself a new mattress any other way. Start off the new year right with a great new mattress from Dollar Mattress. Pick up that phone right now and give them a call toll-free at 1-800-MATTRESS, 1-800-MATTRESS, or on the Wicked Web, it's mattress.com. Dial a mattress, 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. Leave off the last S because it stands for stupendous savings. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. All right. Don't like all the Harper. Don't, don't, don't. Every time I see that retarded dim witch on my TV. He's President of Republican muscle and an articulate idiot. I don't know why they would want this guy, but now he's here. We're screwed the next four years with President Thumb. Oh, what I did to go vote once more and get to we all voted for. If you want this, don't, 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 it's drumming, stupid. 
story here and it didn't uh, print out. Well, I'll be damned. Yeah. It was, uh, what was it about? Something mighty important. Oh, about uh, four people injured on a set of All My Chillins. All right. Too late now, though, because I'm not plugging that baby back in. It stinks like uh, the end of the world here. Yeah, don't you do know it. what the end of the world's going to smell like? I sure do. Like death. I don't think I'm going to call Eric at 2 o'clock unless he's got uh, some, because we know what the problem is, you know? Pretty much. And if it's not that, it. when you take it back, they'll they'll figure out what it actually is. But Oh, it's that. that. It's uh, burning up, baby. It's got burning love inside that. A hunk of hunk of? Well, what else could it be? No, uh, nothing there. Eric, uh, Josh, though, will be dismayed to know that I'm already, like, uh, there's several more stories. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's the number one priority, plus I printed well, you, out the poll. Well, you don't huh? have a computer. You won't know if I don't do them. Well, guess what? I do have a backup and computer, and the minute that I take right. this one over there, I'll be hooking up the old one, that's right. and I'll know exactly what we have on there or not. So right. how do you like that, Mr. Smartass? Because I ain't going away until later on this evening. So, you see... <laughs> Forewarned is for him. There's John Kerry looking scary. Oh, he's not saying we're just playing music. Well, we, you know, that's because everybody in America knows what he said. And uh, Harry Reid just said, we ain't going to be able to block you. It's a done deal. That's what happens when you put a bunch of fascists in office, all you idiots like the ones that voted for Mel Martinez. You're going to get what you wanted, baby. You're going to get fascista Batista all over again. Just kiss your freedoms and your ass goodbye. What movie should never have been remade? Now, maybe Eric in the chat room can, because I don't think he's got any more to, uh, it has nothing to do with worms or viruses or any of this other. That's just a coincidence, sir, wants me to believe. Or maggots. Or, or maybe there's some maggots crawling around inside. Could be. Or faggots. Psycho 85, Planet of the Apes 74, War of the World 74. A flat-footed tie for second place. Pink Panther 70, movies that never should have been remade. Longest Yard 61, Bad News Bears 55. Herbie Lovebug, 37. Rollerball, 33. Willie's Wonka, 26. Ocean's 11, 24. The Blob, 22. Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, 20. Miracle on 34th Street, 20. Godzilla, 19. Shaft, 17. Flight of the Phoenix, 17. The Manchurian Candidate, 16. Stepford Wives, 15. The Producers, 13. Amityville Horror, 12. Cheaper by the Dozen, 12. A Star is Born, 11. Walking Tall, 10. 9. For the Postman Always Rings Twice, Dr. Doolittle and the Time Machine Man. Eight for Freaky Friday, Dawn of the Dead, Mr. Deeds, Meet Joe Black. Uh, when a Stranger Calls. Don't go waste your money on that. Okay, Seven for La... Huh? I said I won't. Oh, please. Seven for La Caja Fall, a.k.a. The Birdcage. Gone in 60 Seconds, The Out of Towners, House of Wax, The Fog. Six for Vanilla Sky, Alfie, Dracula, Cape Fear. Four for Twelve Angry Men. Twelve for Four Angry Men. Four for Inherit the Wind, three for the Italian Job, two for The Hills Have Eyes, two for Assault on Precinct 13, and nobody will vote for The Getaway because I guess nobody's seen it. So there you go, out of 884. We'll get to our 1,000 if it's the last thing we do. And you'll let me know when we, because I got my, you know, thing unplugged. Right. It's Neil Unplugged today. I'll keep refreshing. It's too bad I don't have that thing about the uh, four people injured on the cast of All My Chillins. I guess I'll have to do it again next time. I can go to the report. Huh? I can I just go on to Drudge Report. That's where the story is. Drudge Report. I mean, granted, you don't want to be caught dead looking on that thing. But, you know, we, I, I check all my sources, well, all my inside the, sources. The second time I've actually gone there. Well, really? And the first time... Well, be sure and leave a message when you that. leave. Just say, you fair. don't know who it came from. WQ, uh, QIM, hello. QIM, computer mm -hmm. repaired. Neil, did you see Supernatural the other night? Did I see what? Supernatural. Yeah, yes, I did, Wednesday. That, yeah. that was very chill. It scared me. I was getting goosebumps. It was chilling? Ooh. I get goosebumps when I see Sam, yeah. And uh, one other thing, I got a little sound effect for you. Me and my friends used to use this for when we used to touch our, touching ourselves, mimic it's going. Okay, yeah. great. Five six seven oh five sixty <laughs> pound five sixty. We already got it. I mean, we got a better one on the Verizon. And uh, and by the way, you fairy. Let's see. Speaking of sound effects, I'm going to also have to work on that on Sunday. Get these things all straightened out in here because we're like uh, kind of rejiggering everything here. Oh, like oh, now what's that? Where did all that come from? 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty in the Verizon singular wireless line on a singularly uh, screwed up Friday. It's been a pretty damn good week, and so naturally you know the end of the week would just have to be uh, stuff all screwed up. Well, as soon as I came in here this morning, I told you it smelled like the end of the world, like there was something. Uh, I don't know. Did I tell you like uh, mercurochrome, like iodine, like uh, right. chemicals right. burning in the air, like somebody was uh, stuck a long Cube. poison tube in here trying to like give me the old gas, like iodide. Yeah, exactly. I, that's I almost did when I came in. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing, Pally? Okay, Pally. I got one for you, Paul, man. Fun with Dick and Jane. The new one stinks. Oh, boy. Terrible okay, thanks, move. Pally. The new one, uh, don't go see it. Fun with Dick and Jane. I haven't had one call from anybody who said you're wrong about the constant gardener, Neil. It was a sensational movie, and here's the reason why. Uh-huh. Don't waste your money. I beg you. I plead with you. Go see a bad remake of some marginal movie, but please don't go see The Constant Gardener, right? Yeah, what's his name again? Uh, Chaim Schmendrick? Oh, Ray Fiennes. Ray Fiennes? Who I used to call Ralph Fiennes, but... Well, he may be a wrong. Fiennes actor, but i got news for you. His performance in this is about as dull and as... Uh, oh. And at the end of the movie, they come and shoot him anyway. Good. He, you know, he gets left off out on some island somewhere in Africa... And uh, and he's waiting and waiting, and sure enough, they find him. And then all of a sudden, that's it. And then he's dead, and the goodbye. Yeah, that's it. Horrible movie. WQAM, hello. Hey, you're kicking it old school today, huh? Yes, we are. We're kicking it ancient school, right. How about uh, a remake, The Father of the Bride? The original was much better than the Steve Martin one. Okay. We'll take your word for it. Steve Martin did The Father of the Bride? Yeah, and Father of the Bride... Part two. Oh no. Oh yeah. Well, Steve Martin, we turn out to be as the Antichrist. We used to like him a little oh. bit. Not, not, I never liked him a whole lot, but he was okay. But now he's just uh, losing. He's becoming the Jim Carrey of this decade. We're just getting real tired of his crap. And the fact that he's redoing, trying to be Inspector Clouseau, is just nauseating. That's so wrong. Yeah, exactly. Now that isn't that on our list. I'm, oh, yeah, there it is. It's number four. Oh, it's yeah. got seventy vote. Better be. Man, oh, man. Peter Sellers is turning over in his grave. In fact, he's probably going to send Una Bamba to uh, Steve Martin's house. He'll learn to love it. 27 hundred. Jimmy Carter going to be on late edition on Sunday with Wolf Blitzkrieg, okay? And Jimmy's going to say, bada bee, bada bee, oh, old Jimmy. He's running around the world saving all these starving people and doing wonderful things. Probably going to go over there and mediate the peace between the Fatah and the Hamas, wouldn't you think? The Otter. Right. And his brother, he sure was a, uh, well, we can't say the word. He was a peer, wasn't he? Yes, he was. <laughs> he sure was. This How is it? Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. When she took the stage on New Year's Eve, I thought that I might die. And I couldn't look away, I say, no matter how I tried. It was like she had two watermelons underneath her dress. She looked like a combination of Miss Piggy and Mae West. Oh, Mariah, you must tell us, please. When you let those puppies go, do they wind up around your knees? I'll never forget the time, it was 11.35. That's the very moment I realized that her boobs were alive. They were bobbing, they were jumping, they were begging to get loose. And I think the only thing bigger on her was her caboose. And I said, oh, Mariah, at least you hit the stars. Which is not easy to do when you've got two as big as cars. Wreck them. It was like I could touch them cause I was watching in HD If you stack them on top of each other, they're as tall as me It's a good thing they did not keep you on stage for very long Otherwise I think we'd have a brand new girlfriend for King Kong and I said, Oh Mariah, your bra must need a break I bet you would not get hurt if you stepped on a garden rake. And I said, oh, Mariah, what else can we say? You could make the Brokeback Mountain Cowboys wish that they weren't gay. 1233, it's going to take a lot more than that. A lot more. Oh, speaking of that, here's a fact that says, oh, and uh, guess what the good news is. What's the good well, news? it's not really good news, but I mean, I looked in my closet, in my big closet. Yeah. 
Ruby. my walk-in closet. You ought to see who's hanging out in there. And uh, I got two computers sitting in there. I'm not even wow. sure what the other one is. I got extra keyboards. I got equipment that hasn't been Beautiful. invented yet here. That's always smart to have. So what I'm going to do as soon as I unhook this one right after the show, right at 2 o'clock straight mm-hmm. up, I'm going to hook up the old one. Which you know, Now, even you would agree I can do that. Oh, yeah, no problem. Then stick the old keyboard in there. That's right. And uh, then I'll, like, send uh, like maybe 80 or 100 stories off to Josh for the weekend. Then I'll you go should. and take this one back. He deserves it. Yeah. Make up for uh, coming in. What time did he come in? About 12.06? <laughs> hey, listen, I understand Daddy had uh, water on the knee or whatever it was or, like, uh, had to get his uh, thing drained there, and that's we understand that. That's Dear important. Uncle Neil and... Huh? I said, how are you doing? Dear Neil and George, I was back in South Florida last week, heard the great news about Mo. He sucks. Mo with this stuff. I live in Vegas now. This is Steve from Vegas. And don't miss South Florida one bit except hearing you guys in the Humper and the Mad Dog. The Humper... Hey, stop it. In the Mad Dog. All right. My question is, DJ's talk host, past or present, worst wig. <laughs> oh, Mo, Cousin Brucey, Bob Grant, and what's that? Oh, Jerry Witzner. Oh, Jerry. Right. Thanks, Steve from Vegas. Well, good luck to you, Steve from Vegas. And uh, how come you are not listening online? Maybe his computer, maybe his power supply burned up. That could be. It happens all the time. So, in other words, the power supply has got really nothing to do with his little uh, 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 square box on the outside. No, that's the, just the power cord. That's just the adapter, right. I beg your pardon? Your power cord, your adapter, correct. Your power cord. No, see, don't don't start, like, complicating, okay? Keep it simple for the old man. Keep well, it simple. Well, a power cord is just the wire, and if there's a box hanging out there somewhere, that's the adapter. There's a little black box. Transforming adapter device thing. Right. Know. And that thing is just fine as wine. Right. So that thing's not going to screw up my other computer. No, you can just unplug everything, take the case. Correct. Okay. Now, did the other computer have its own power cord that you stuck up there somewhere? No. Okay. Then just use that thing. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'd be saying. Here's the article that George just uh, found for me. Four, and see, this is disappointing. I thought maybe it was Susan Lucci. Yeah, too bad. Four stunt artists were hurt in a special effects accident on the set of the soap opera All My Chillins, the ABC show said today. Unfortunately, during a shoot which include, included planned special effects, four stunt people were injured, the show said in a statement. All four expected to make a swift recovery. The accident occurred Tuesday at a studio on West 66th Street. The daytime show had publicized upcoming Mardi Gras episodes that included an explosion that rocks Pine Valley and its residents. And four stunt artists were, but a bing, but a boom. I was thinking of maybe it was Susan Lucci and then, of course, Freaky Carlos. So they'd be weeping, oh, no, that poor Susan, she's my hero. And her daughter, by the way, is the one that plays that nasty Gwen on uh, Passions with a big beak. Oh, my God. Do you know that's Susan Lucci's daughter? Of course, you don't watch no, Passions. Don't like so what do you know? Or all my children. And now, all of a sudden, today on Passions, you'll notice that, or was it yesterday, that, uh, and you'll see more of it today, that Ethan and Gwen are in India. They're on horseback, on white horses, and all the Indian folks are there and say, what's that? And uh, who shows up there? Teresa with her uh, shmata on and all. Oh, it's just, it's so ridiculous. It's so silly. Oh, look at that. There's the Hamas people waiting yeah. there are green flags. Trust me, you want the calico flags instead of these green flags. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Well, because that's why the, uh, the, the calico people are pissed off, because this is the terrorist party here. And no. they won. That's bad. No. Why is that? Because nobody's right. going to deal with them. Yeah. They were on the verge of something over there. People were talking. They were on the verge of what? They were talking, which is better than blowing each other Get up. Get out of here. Boy, you sure made a big turn. They were on the verge of like... What are you uh, talking you know, about making... a big turn? Yeah. A little turn. Remember the big obstacle was Yasser. I say let Yasser. them all kill each other, okay? Anybody with a brain, get the hell out of there. And the rest of the well, crazy people fine. who want to stay there, do. kill each other. We'll pack you a salami sandwich and but a couple of falafel happen. balls. We're not going to we'll get out some... of there. Duff will send you some falafel balls. How do you like that? We're not going to get out of there. What? We're not well, that's because we've got our Israel friends. Uh-huh. You know, that's what the president said, our friends in Israel. Anybody don't accept Israel, uh, well, you yeah. know what? Friends like these. Yeah, who needs enemies? Who needs halava? Anyway, speaking of Jews, Aaron Brown's all been out of shape. Remember downtown Aaron Brown? Doing a heck of a job, Aaron. The anchorman whose boss once characterized him as ice compared with his successor's fire was anything but chilly in the impassioned speech he delivered to at the Society of the Four Arts. Isn't that exciting? Thrilling. Whiny, wimpy with a really bad uh, reddish brown purple hairpiece, Aaron Brown. Truth no longer matters in the context of politics, and sadly in the context of cable news, said Aaron Brown, whose four year period as anchor of CNN's Newsnight in November, when network executives gave his job to Anderson Pooper in a bid to push the show's ratings closer to front runner Fox News. And of course, that isn't happening because Anderson Cooper sends everyone to the Pooper. 
Brown said he tried to give viewers a balanced diet of light and serious news with Newsnight, but I always knew when I got to the Brussels sprouts I was on thin ice, he said. The Brussels sprouts. Eh, yeah, what? When Newsnight spent four hours covering the arrest of actor Robert Blake for the murder of his wife, Brown received thousands of emails criticizing the amount of time the show spent on the story. Nevertheless, however, that show was aired in April 2002, received the highest ratings of any program since Newsnight's coverage of the November 2001 crash of American Airlines Flight 587. Television is the most perfect democracy, Brown said. You sit there with your remote control and vote. The remote clicks to another channel when serious news airs, but when the media covers the scandal surrounding Lacey Peterson, the runaway bride, or Michael Jackson, there are no clicks then, he said. And he left out the uh, chick from Aruba. And Terry and her Cute. tuba. With the departure from the screen of the Titans, Tom Brokaw, Peter Jennings, and Dan Rather, who resisted the temptations of their bosses to go for the ratings grab, it'll be years before an anchor man or woman will have the clout to fight these battles, he said. Brown has spent most of his 30 years in TV news. He's covered everything from the Columbine High School murders to the aftermath of the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. In fact, most of the time Aaron was on the air, it was a disaster. But viewers may remember his best his on-the-spot coverage of the terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. I don't remember him at all involved in that. Do you? Who? <laughs> Downtown Aaron Brown, baby. No, man, I don't want Doing a heck job. of a job, Brownie. He's shocked by how unkind our world has become, he said. Email and talk radio appear to have given people license to say anything, regardless of how cruel or false it may be, about his nasty muskrat-looking hairpiece. He cited the example of an email faulting what, he, what the sender considered to be Newsnight's inadequate coverage of an anti-war protest in Washington, D.C. The note ended with, I hope the violence visited on the people of Iraq will someday be visited on your children. Those on the opposite side of the spectrum are no more tolerant, Brown said. Any criticism of the administration is regarded as hatred of the president and hatred of the country itself. And bada beep, bada boop, and you're out. You're out, Aaron. Isn't he on Fox now? Where the hell he is? Who cares about him? He's such small potatoes and he was so whiny. Whiny Aaron Brown. Whiny and boring and ponderous. Kind of like a Dan LaBastard and that singing cowboy he's got on there. Isn't that that gay cowboy? Red Kotex. It's really a shame that my computer has got to be unplugged here because I could be checking on there with all those great comments on the Greg Kotex line. Oh, yeah. You want me to fill you in? No. No, thanks. Okay. That, that's why I feel like almost sane today. This is Abu, Neil Abu, Rogers. Abu, this is Abu, Abu. Suck it in and hold it. I slept out uh, the old computer, and I got it sitting right down here on the floor, just in the right spot. All right. And during oh, each right. break, I'm making, like, little adjustments. I wouldn't be surprised, like, in about a half an hour, I got that whole thing all set up and running for you. All right. I'll have to make sure Josh gets all them stories that he needs. He does need them. Oh, yeah. Whole bunch. And just to make sure that they go up there, like, real early. Uh... <laughs> oh, right. Oh, man. This is exciting. It's, uh, and I sure hope this is the right one because there's two, two computers in my closet there, and I sure hope this is the right one. It's got, like, all the stuff on it that I want. Although I guess that doesn't really make any difference, does no, it? No, if it's not, just uh, grab the other one. Oh, I see. 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon Singular Wireless line on a really screwed up Friday, man. It's uh, a little uh, hectic here. Mm -hmm. You don't realize how important that pewter is to you until, uh, you know, you sit down here and you feel just stark naked. I know. Really bad. Like you're in the dark. WQAM, hello. QAM. 
Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you? I got a couple of movies for your uh, bowl Today that they okay? shouldn't have made. Yes, sir. How about, all the, how about all the Halloween movies? I don't know if that was on those the... Are sequels. Um, those are sequels, not remakes. It's not the same movie. It's just a sequel. Oh, okay. Different, different uh, story. Oh, what about Fun with Dick and Jane? What about that? I think we added that on there. We're supposed to, although maybe uh, Josh didn't do it. I can't No, tell. no, we did. We do we? I told oh, him. there's the food is in there. I can always tell when he's got a mouthful. Man, sounds just like Duff. What are you eating now? Uh, Howie's? Yes, sir. I know it. I could smell it. Malibu chicken. I'll tell you one good thing, man. It sure smells a lot better in here right now. Man. I'll bet. I even, oh, God. I didn't even have to use my Lysol no more. Although, here's another, like Bernie Getz would say. There's another one for you. Just uh, spray some in your mouth there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Clean up that potty mouth. Yeah, Mr. Clean or Listerine. I do use that new orange Listerine. I realize that sounds yeah. disgusting. Oh, but you know something that's not, huh? No, I, have I get no problem that big gigantic screen. bottle, and it's really yeah. good stuff. Don't it's mess around, then. It's because Mo used to call me Ginger Rogers, and so I figured if I'm uh, dangerous to get gingivitis. That's right. You don't want that, and that's bad for your heart. You do realize I don't want to keep repeating like sounding like an old fuddy duddy like uh, the Godfather, you know. But your gums in your heart, man, is a big correlation between healthy gums and a healthy heart. What about your rectum? And, oh, and, and man, if your gums ain't good, your uh, ass ain't worth a damn. I'm telling you, you know, you can laugh all you want. Your gums, take good care of them gums, man. Be careful what you uh, put by your gums. That stuff's good, too, that tangerine. I know what you're talking about. Tangerine, Listerine, man. Keep you clean and get away from that gingivitis. That does sound good. I love tangerine. It, it is good. It's very good. I mean, you know, you, you swish it around in your mouth. You don't want to keep it in there too long because then it starts, bur it burns, man. It's, like real, it's heavy duty. We've got to get that dropped. See, when, the reason that Listerine works is because you can tell it works because it's like so intense that you know mm -hmm. it's killing everything in there. Makes you cry. That, that's right. <laughs> and you can just imagine little things that are crawling around inside uh -huh. your mouth. Oh, they're just, they're just dying and crying. That's right. You can hear that sound. I'm dying over here. Way down in your gullet. WDQAM, hello. Hi. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Bye. You're sorry? I think I have the wrong number. This who isn't Jeff, calling? is it? Who are you calling? Jeff. Jeff? Jeff who? Jeff Reardon. Oh, don't <laughs> say that. Oh. That was bad. <laughs> oh. How do you like that? We finally get a lady call. It's the wrong number. That, that goes to show you about that female audience. Oh, you've got a lot of ladies. Yeah, we got to have any women listening to this show. We're just not respectable enough to listen to this show, huh? We got to hear Oprah. And Oprah. Oh, and speaking of Oprah, I got that story about that jackass James Fry. Uh -huh. They ought to both fry, if you ask me. And then also that uh, uh, what's his name's wife, Gay Talese. By the way, have you uh, seen him or heard him talk? Did you watch any of that Larry King thing? He speaks. Oh, oh, yeah. I wait till you hear this. You're gay. Listen. Yeah. Last night I'm channel surfing. It's about eleven eleven fifteen. I just finished getting really depressed watching that awful awful movie, the um, the Constant Gardener. The and who's on MSNBC at that hour? I forgot, and I watched about four seconds of it. Uh, silly ass prissy Tucker Carlson. Mm -hmm. And they're talking. And of course, what are they talking about? Oprah. That's all anybody talked about all day yesterday, and they're showing the clips. And he says, he says to whoever the guest was, the talking head analyst, he says, "Oh, and just watching him, he was talking that prissy voice." And, and I'm thinking to myself, "Well, you talk about the pot calling the kettle pink. That would be like Anderson Pooper calling somebody gay." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Jesus, talk about prissy. I mean, good golly. So are you trying to say that James Fry is gay? He had a wife, you know, though. She uh, slid he? her wrists. Oh. In the book, she uh, hung herself, but then he said on Oprah, oh, she just slid her wrists. Yeah, that's and uh, she had the, for huh? some reason different. Wouldn't you think that with her billion dollars, she'd have a research team there working on her so that they don't have some ringer come on? I hope that all the phony uh, book people, everybody that writes a book that's a pack of lies and pretends it's accurate, uh, I hope they all go on her show and just destroy her ass. And all those millions of silly ass women. Well, Oprah said it was good, so I'm going to go out and buy the book. Well, great. God forbid you should like pay attention to something that means something, like all these people getting killed in Iraq. We had a story on our website which Josh may remember if he put it on there about when the hell are the women going to start screaming about the war and all oh, the yeah, killing. I saw it. I saw it. You see that story? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good point. How come Oprah's not screaming about that every day on her show about all these innocent people that are being butchered over there? I don't know if you've met women. But they tend to be heartless bitches. Really? Yeah. Well, that's the women you've met. And you're, and the ones that you've met? Heartless bitches. I see. Except, of course, for Devin Accounting. We love her. Yes, we do. Live. <laughs> our favorite girl. Oh. WQAM, hello. QAM. 
Do you not hear the sirens? They're coming to get them. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, for your call. Yes. yes. City of Angels. You know, it's funny, you mentioned, it's funny you mention that because yesterday I'm looking for City of God in my uh, video store. Yep. And uh, I did see City of Angels, which I never heard of before, and I guess I was lucky I didn't get it. What, what's that about? It's a horrible. It's uh, about an angel that falls in love with a human. Uh, but it's a horrible remake of a uh, German flick, Wings of Desire. Okay. City of Angels. We got it, Pally. Thanks. Got it. Got it? Got it. Got it. What are you eating? Oh, that's right. I'm about blue chicken. I'll be damned. I can't wait to have me a great dinner at the famous tonight. The famous what? Famous restaurant in the uh, casino. And that's a good place. Got an old fashioned meatloaf, beef barley soup. Mm, mm, sounds good. Man. I love beef barley. And the best part of it, it's all for free. I used to get in comp in a casino and you say, oh, it's all the meals and the rooms are for free for a few thousand. Well, I mean, you know, when you lose your ass. They don't cotton in those places to uh, people that like schnorr for free food. For example, at Woodbine one time, you know, you can get free meals anytime you want, although I wouldn't take a dog to eat there. But there was a, an old Chinese couple ahead of me in line. I was cashing in my points. I sure wasn't eating there. And um, the old Chinese... And the woman was bitching him out. She said, listen, you're going to have to start. And unless you play here, you can't keep coming back and uh, getting these certificates oh. to eat. In other words, they were just showing up there because they had the player's card. I see. And they were eating for free. They weren't gambling at all. They just were snoring there, you know. Preloading Canadians? Chinese Canadians. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. Those Chinese sure like to gamble, though. Oh, yes, God. They just... what's up, what's up what is that? that all about? I don't know. WQAM, Hello. 2 a.m. Hey, hey, what's going on? I got one for you both. Okay, Pally. Fog. The yeah, fog. Fog's on there. Fog has got uh, some votes. How many has it got? 108. Fog has got seven. The seven. Only seven. And I'm glad they mentioned that one, too, because I saw that. That's uh, current now, the remake. Mm -hmm. And I saw that in the store. In fact, maybe I should have gotten that instead of uh, the... Have you noticed we haven't gotten one call about the constant gardener? No, I don't think anybody saw it. Oh, I, I pray... I pray, please believe me. I mean, you know, I realize our tastes aren't always the same, but the fact of the matter is the acting is very dull. It's very British. It's very uh, ponderous. It is boring, okay? So if you're having trouble sleeping at night... This is Neil Rogers. This is 562 AM. Someday that would happen. Whoa. What? What's going on there? I was on the other side of the thing. I'm putting my computer together. Oh, Jesus. Right. You get panicky? No, I was Good. on the other side of the thing, too, uh, reheating my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might have passed out from the fumes or something. No, street, I was so. on the other side of the thing, and I reached over, and I hit the keyboard, and I hit the wrong button. Isn't that bad? <laughs> no, it's funny. Let's do it again. No, I like, I like the fact that these all these things are color-coded. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like pink and green. And, so you know where to uh, stick them. Right. There's only one place for each thing. Uh, and look at that. Thing. And, and when I hit that thing, yeah. I, put it, <laughs> I put it over on the audition line. That'll Don't happen. I hit when that happens? Anyway. Hey, it's Howard. Howard David. Welcome back to the Mo Howard David Show, where we're chock full of zany but good, clean family fun. <laughs> I'm here, and you're dead. That's a tight up phrase, huh? You know that pipe smoking thing's rape is funny? Is that funny, huh? What? 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 Since when is gang rape funny? What do you require of me? I require you drop your pants. Well, now, see here. Right now. I want those pants drop them. Drop them. Drop them. Drop them. Drop them. You like it? Hey, get your hands up. Get out of there. Get up into the mess. That's right. Don't touch my delicates. I'm tender. Why does everybody want to rape me? Why? Because we think it's funny. That's why. Don't put it there. Put it away. Get your ass out of that sink. i got to wash these eight spots off my head. What are you, some kind of fairy? I'm not a What do you know about being queer, you moron? I've been right enough to know the difference. We're supposed to be talking about sports here. This is sports radio over here. We love men. Yeah. From this point on, I demand. To get paid by the door. Yeah. Now we're going to make something out of this crepe paper, you understand? No. Then maybe later I'll pull the link sausages out of my pants, okay? <laughs> no. It's a joke, you moron. Oh, no. 
There's marshals in my pants. Oops. 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 Get them off of me. Hello, Warden. How can I help you? Well, you see, Warden, yes. I keep getting raped. Yeah, I'll look into it right away. Thanks, Warden. It's about time, somebody. But now drop your pad. Huh? I said drop your pad. There, since I'm all candle, get you something to do while you're watching golf. Like uh, pouring the uh, hot liquid in your eye. Uh, like this. Ah, now look what you made me do. God, keep your pants on. Now, then why? You want to walk my show? You'll do as you're told. Now, get over here. Yeah, that's right. Now, come here. Now, get over there. Come here. Now, come here. Not there. Over here. Oh. Stole the pizza. No, I did not steal no pizza. Stole the pizza. Now, see here. I ain't no pie burglar. Stole the pizza. I did not steal the pizza. I only had one slice. Put your head closer to the glass door. See if anybody's inside. Okay. No. Closer. Closer? A little closer. Like this. Like this. <laughs> oh, you're a tough guy, huh? Why, I ought to... <laughs> now, see here. <laughs> all right, all right, you supplicant. Step aside. I'm the new pope, see? I stand before you now. <laughs> Let me bless you, my son. The <laughs> boy. The <laughs> boy. The <laughs> boy. Well, perhaps you'll garner much under my tutelage. I don't like the look of that tutelage. Yeah. I don't want your tutelage over me. They'll <laughs> <laughs> never find me in. <laughs> of course, it's more important that I outlive you. Why, I'll have you know. <laughs> I go home now. Oh, I'm sure. Watch out for Mr. Whipple. Forget about it. That's what I say. And kiss my ass. Rectum. Okay, it's 104. I am so excited. I'm going to, like, pee right on the uh, chair here. Well, just don't get any on the computer. Oh, I better not. Guess what I did during that, during that, well, and again, we had a little, I was on the other side and hit the wrong button. You, uh, Sorry. You put all the female parts into the uh, male parts or uh, the other way around. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Are I'm you just, um, I'm hoping this is going to work now because it came on and it said Windows and ba-da-beep, ba-da-boop, ba bob It says which drive you, search the best driver for your device, ba-da-beep, ba-da-boop. Huh? How come I'm having to go through all of this? It's been off a long time. I don't know. I don't know what you're seeing. I'm seeing a green background, and it says Windows driver file, search for the device. Oh, it's probably because uh, you, the hardware from the old computer, you're plugging hardware from the old computer Correct. into this even older computer. Yeah. So it's just trying to recognize all of the parts. Yeah. Which it may or may not. Oh, don't say that. Well, How long? Windows was able to locate a, a thing for this device. Yeah. Like, uh, well, screw that. Just finish. As long okay. as it, uh, the keyboard and mouse and the monitor work, that's all you need. I beg your pardon? Keyboard works. The mouse works. All right. But it just stuff. keeps saying, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk to around with this during the next break. At least I got the other one all unplugged and unconnected. I got the new one in there and the uh, monitor and the, uh, the hip bone connected to the knee bone. Isn't that exciting oh, or what? Right. Yeah, it is, actually. It says Windows has found new hardware and is installing it. And it just uh, did a beep. Huh? That's good when it does that. But this just keeps going around and, and like in a circle. I see. You know what I mean? Just keeps giving me the same. Unable to locate a uh, driver for the device. Might be doing it several times for every item it's looking for. Oh, no. Don't say that. I Wait a minute. It. You're right. And there it is. There's the, uh, oh, <laughs> this time. Let <laughs> me realize this is not, this isn't compelling no. radio. Although the sun is shining, it's going to be 43 today. That guy that was all bent out of shape across the street. Man, this is exciting as, as all get out. And, and you're going to want me to use Mozilla Firefox because you're going to tell me that if I use uh, Internet Explorer that the world is going to come to an end? Well, you know that. That's how, You're the one that turned it and all there, on And there, look Firefox. at that. This is the right one. This is the right Peter, and there is Neil Rogers in my home page and my Beautiful. own page. And I can send Josh a thousand stories now. That's yummy. Mm, I'm going to start working on that right now instead of finishing this hour. <laughs> Just do it. Man, although I don't see the pull result on there. That's because it switched over to Firefox. I've got to click that thing on there. Okay, there it is. 
Now, well, I don't, I don't want to start patting myself on the back because this is really well, a pain in the ass. It's not, huh? You deserve it. Start patting. I'd like to know who else we have on our air staff on this radio station who could have just performed in the last 45 minutes the miraculous, astonishing technical feats of yours truly, of this old queen. Start George S. Patton. Aren't you excited by this? I am. Mighty what proud. movie should... Huh? I'm mighty proud. What movie should never have been made? Although I do want to get rid of that one uh, toolbar on there. Is one toolbar too yeah. many. I don't know what that one is, but I sure don't want to see that. The search toolbar. Get the, There you go. Get that baby out of there. Yeah. Got my Alexa toolbar. How can I have Alexa on Firefox? Oh, I'm not on Firefox. Good. There you go. What movie should have never been remade? Psycho 90. How many we got? 977. It's a good thing I got on here. Now we can push for that 1,000. Psycho 98, War of the Worlds 83, Planet of the Apes 79, Pink Panther 76, The Longest Yard 64. And you see, now there's no pressure. If it takes them six months to get the other one, it, I don't know that it should. See what I'm saying? Always good to have a spiral. Always good to have a backup, baby. It's just like, uh, you know, when you right. got some hot chick waiting at home and all of a sudden maybe she takes off, you know? Back that ass up. She uh, empties out your bank account and takes off right. and leaves town. Always good to have some, like, Swedish year chick there to replace the Russian uh, Natasha. That sounds Swedish. Yeah. Longest Yard, 64. Bad News Bear, 56, as in Q, 56. Herbie the Love Bug, 40. Rollerball, 36. Willy Wonka's got... Absolutely. No, Willy... About 30, man. <laughs> I'm a little off now. Man, this is quite an exercise. The Blob, 26. Ocean's 11, 25. Miracle on 34th Street, 22. Guess who's coming to dinner, 20. Godzilla, 20. And after that, it's Small Potatoes. Out of 977. What do you got? Oh, man, let me scroll down. Yeah, scroll down. Nine seventy-nine. Nine seventy. Oh, I got nine eighty-one. How do you like that? Oh. Anybody go for a thousand? Like an auction. Anyway, getting back to this Oprah business, which I, I got to be honest with you, I don't give a crap about her. She makes me want to barf. I don't care about this James Fry fag or whoever. And an extraordinary reversal of her defense of the author, whose memoir she catapulted to the top of the bestseller list. Oprah Winfrey rebuked James Fry, author of a million little pieces on her TV show yesterday for lying about his past and portraying the book as a truthful account of his life. I feel duped, Ms. Winfrey told Mr. Fry, but more importantly, I feel you betrayed millions of readers. She added, I sat on the stage back in September, and I asked you, you know, a lot of questions, and what you conveyed to me, I think, to millions of people, was uh, that was all true. Well, it wasn't all true. In fact, most of it wasn't true. And it goes on. She chose it as part of her TV book club. And uh, three months afterward, more than two million copies were sold, making it the fastest-selling book in the club's 10-year history. I think that everybody who bought that book should take it and stick it right where the moon don't shine, Oprah. Back them. That's right. I think there's plenty of room. Alternately appearing to fight back tears and displaying vivid anger at the author and his publisher, Nan A. Talese. I told you, it's Gay Talese's wife. You know, Gay Talese, honor thy father. Mm -hmm. Gay, Gay. Talese. Who heads an, imp an imprint of Random House's Double Day Division. Ms. Winfrey stared straight at Mr. Fry and asked, why would you lie? Yeah. She looked him right in the face and said, why would you lie? And he said, how about June? I made a mistake, Mr. Fry replied, and he developed a tough guy image of himself as a coping mechanism to help address his alcohol and drug addiction. And when I was writing the book, he said, instead of being introspective as I should have been, I clung to that image. It was a stunning bit of drama that had people throughout the publishing industry glued to their TV sets yesterday afternoon. And, of course, on January the 11th, Mr. Fry appeared on Larry King and did a total lie, and Oprah called in, and uh, Gay Talese's wife was on there, and, oh, my gosh, we're being uh, picked on, and but it turns out uh, it's all a bunch of crap. Uh -huh. Nice going, Larry, as usual. And, of course, Larry didn't read the book anyway. He never does. Jackass. Now, let me just another reminder. Come out to Marlin Select to see tomorrow at Dolphin Stadium, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can meet Don Trell Willis between 10 and noon. He'll be the only Marlin player you have any I recognize at all. Didn't they just get rid of Alex Gonzalez? Uh, they, they did, yeah. Yes. Well, I forget about Miguel Cabrera, but yeah, yeah, Miguel, then yeah. you're done. You can meet Don Trell Willis between 10 and noon, and you can lock in tickets for the Boston Red Sox before individual tickets go on sale. I mean, we got how many Red Sox fans we got in town? About 30, man. Plus, you can register to win a private luxury suite for opening day. That's Marlins. Select a seat tomorrow at Dolphin Stadium, 10 to uh, 2. Go there and pick your seat. Now, let's see. What else can I do on this thing? This, this, honest to God, this is so exciting, although the print is way too big on here. And I don't want to, And you know something? This is the right computer. Because right. it's got all of my things on all here, all of my children. And, uh, yeah. Huh? All your bookmarks and whatnot. All my bookmarks, all my uh, URLs, ABCs. No, XYZs. you are. Huh? No, you are. Although it doesn't have the Miami Herald on here, probably during the period of time. <laughs> no, it, it probably censored that out <laughs> during the time it was out of commission. Don't forget, by the way, Josh, in the next break, don't expect no lie because I already did that. Oh, you don't have no way of knowing that because George sent me the pages backward along. So Brandy's already got done. You got it? Got it. Brandy's already was done. 
Look at that. There's Yahoo.com for that crappy uh, email thing. Oh, my God. CommonDreams.org. I can send Josh probably a thousand stories between now and even the time I get off the air. This is Neil All right. Rogers. All right. This is 562 AM. And another one of those fake rejoins, man. Now, who, who's doing that stuff? Tommy? Beat him up. Take away his drugs. Bellavito. It's a 116. Yeah, that's another fake rejoin, just like the fake ending on that. They're trying to get me from all sides today, folks. I'm trying to do engineering. I'm trying to, like, pretend doing a show here. My lungs are, like, full of that vapors. So I got that box all disconnected now. Now, you tell me that's all you need to take in is just the plain box. Just the box. Just the case, the CPU, as they call it. None of the accoutrements. No. Great. Anyway, here's another fact from Riley. How many is that today? About 30, man. Uh, by the way, I was spying. Oh, yeah, that's the excuse he was listening to Danny Boy. I figured Lebastia will mention you after you ripped his lounge singing lover, Greg Old Blue Balls, Kotex. My girlfriend, the blow-up doll Tammy, also says hello. And by the way, see, he always redeems himself with these faxes. This is probably somebody we know. Although, look at where this comes from. Look at the name of the business. I never did uh, look. Mounted oh. Memories. <laughs> so maybe that's what the old blow-up doll says. By the way, he says, Constant Gardner did suck. Wasted two hours of my life that I can't get back. Very good point, Riley, whoever you are. Leave me alone. Five, six, seven. I, I just, I'm sitting here looking at this thing. And I'm just amazed to myself. This is really simple, easy. Uh, any idiot can do this. Pretty much. And what I was trying to tell you before uh, was that everything, all the, is color-coded. Right. Like so the, like, uh, the, the keyboard and the all The pink that. thing goes in the pink hole. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. And the uh, green thing goes in the green hole. Right. And et cetera. We've got 996 votes there on the poll, speaking of hole. And as a result, we'll have 1,000 before we can say, hey, uh, Geldy, at 2 o'clock. Did we have a thousand before I said Geldy at two o'clock? Nine ninety eight. That's pretty great, considering considering what kind of a show this has been. Wouldn't wish this one on Hitler. WQAM, hello. Two AM. Good afternoon, Neil. Buenos to you. Uh -huh. I could uh, say the one of the worst movies that should have never been made was Kevin Costner's Waterworld. Yeah. That, is that good for the poll? Or that, was that uh, a sequel? Oh, yeah. Was that a remake? Was that made originally or not? No. Oh, I think it was original. No, and that's... Uh, no. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything with our poll? No. no. They're, they're quite, well, I mean, they'll that's answer the question fault. they I mean, want. He tuned it in. He's answering a different question. What, what's the all-time worst movie? Which we've done that a thousand times. Waterworld. Not Maybe a good he's movie, water but, sports like yeah. Ricky Martin. You never know. When is Boca doing that song, by the way? When Golden Shower he said he was waking spritz on you. Okay. I think he's going to do a whole shower medley. <clears throat> is he really? All the rain songs. What movie should never have been remade is the question. Now, that's another one. What movie never should have been made? Uh, that's an excellent idea, which is probably very similar to what's the worst movie of all time. And let's have a big hand for Neil putting that uh, thing there. I, I'm, I'm looking at it. I can't even believe it. And, of course, oh, it's right. a lot spiffier looking now because this is the first time I use the old, I do. I think it is, the old uh, computer with the new monitor, with my new nice NEC um, monitor. All right. Man, my flat screen as opposed to the old fat well, uh, screen. Blow a trumpet for you. Great. That's enough. Rick says, this is a different Rick. For the poll, how about King Kong? We put it on there, even though it uh, was great. We did put it on there? We just now. 
Oh, we just did put it on there. Also, not all golfers are boring nerds. And then he writes, Well, you're not contradicting yourself, Rick, in West Palm, but have a great life and a great time. Don't lose your balls in the water. 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon Singular Wireless Line. Geldy at 2, Mad Dog from Hooters and Doral at 4. Geldy's going to be at the Entha Center, so go over there and throw some stale of hockey pucks at him. Panther preview at 7, speaking of that. Panthers host the New Jersey Devils and Martin Brodeur and all those other frogs at 7.30 tonight. Marty Brodeur, which means that probably old Doc Emmerich's in town. How's it going, Doc, eh? And then we've got Eddie K. rhymes with A right after the hockey game. WQAM, hello. QAM, better answer. I'll tell the story about Rimmer puking in the bucket again. Hello. Hey, Neil. This is, uh, my name's David. Hey, uh, David. One, one, one uh, movie that you didn't mention was Vanishing. They remade it with Kiefer, changed the ending, and jeez. Right. Good print. Yeah, that's an, we've talked about that one before. Now, they should never have made that, boy. That was a bad mistake. I like the first one. I can't even remember how it ended. The first one was like the French or Dutch or whatever right. it was. French yeah, or that Dutch. was a good movie, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad you can't remember how it ended because then you'd screw it yeah. up everybody. Okay, thanks a lot, Pally. Vanishing, you got it on there? Right. Where you are We're, right now. How could we point. leave that off? Because we've talked about oh, it on this similar kind of a poll. Mm-hmm. Vanishing is always on there, but maybe a little vanishing cream might do it. I can think of some people who'd like to use some vanishing cream on. Mm. I bet you we got our 1,000 votes right now. We stopped looking right there. We got 1,006 by my count on my uh, thing, on my poll. 1,006 pick up sticks. The only thing is the size of the print on this baby is just way uh, too big. But I'll, I'll deal you with that. You can fix it. I'll deal. Uh, believe me, I can. You, you've, uh, all you guys have instructed me so well. Tools, this options, is a case, blah, blah, blah. This is a case of the student passing the teacher by a million miles. I got my computer expertise, although it's the first time I ever had my thing fried. So, you know, if you never had your thing fried before, you're not really no, familiar with how to deal with it. I it myself. <laughs> Sometimes the, uh, the Flavor Wave uh, Deluxe Oven is really good. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got a special slot in there, as a matter of fact. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. So I just take that thing, that just the box in my right. receiver, and, and say, see, and you go "Make this and... better. It's fried. The power supply fried." Right. And they'll Please. look at me and say, "You got to be kidding me!" Exactly. And of course, after being only two months, it certainly got it because I didn't buy the extended warranty. And tell them, even though we're pretty convinced, you're going to yeah. want them to check it out. So tell them that that's what you think it is, so that they do get yeah. something other than well, this. Well, I'll now. tell them what it did. That, right. You know, that it yeah. shut itself off and it was stinking and frying. I right. mean. Uh, seriously, when I keep first walked in here, it's a damn good thing that I did the notice it. I would have been if I wouldn't have opened the window. I'd, I'd be on the floor right now. And it shouldn't make a difference, but you know how people are. Don't tell I know them how people don't, are. Don't tell them that you leave it on all the time. Oh, just don't mention that. No, I'm just going to tell them it's only two months old, and here That's it is. Right. Uh, I don't use it all that much. Uh, That's you know. right. There you go. And uh, this thing is a piece of crap. I don't want them to give me a new one though, because I sure don't want to have to reinstall it. Oh uh, no. Now, I'm trying to think, but the reason that I got the new one mainly is that this old one was uh, crashing quite a bit, and I used to have to Probably. unplug. Probably slow, Remember that? yeah. Plug, oh, yeah, plus it's slow. And the new one is so much spiffier and neater when it works. Oh, no, what's that say on there? <gasps> Fatal error. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's about the printer. You want to know why? Because I think I got the wrong the printer thing plugged in the wrong spot, which is not a big deal. No. That just popped up on my phone uh, uh, screen. Oh, yeah, God. No big whoop. No big whoop. WQAM, hello. QAM, Computer Central, CompUSA. <laughs> hey, hello, Neil. Good, good afternoon. And hey, I'm, to so, you. I'm so glad you got to see City of God and actually uh, we're entertained. Same thing happened to me, too. I didn't want to see it, but I ended up seeing it and enjoying it. Was it, was good. it was definitely worth watching. It was very good. I, I, and again, I'm not going to get carried away and say, oh, no. they, they're right. It's the greatest movie I ever saw. So, <laughs> you know, that's over the top. But it was very good, and it was, uh, it was uh, opened up your eyes a little bit and made you want to stay the hell away from Rio for sure. Well, and by the way, speaking of that, on your DVD, did you happen to go to the special feature section? Not yet. Oh, okay, because on there they have an interview about 15, 20 minutes with the police chief of Rio de Janeiro that's fantastic. Really? It's, yeah, well worth seeing. He's one of the most lucid honest guys I've ever met talking about the police force and well, the corruption. I know it's supposed to be a true story, but I'm just curious if, if there actually were real, you know, yeah. like, was there really a little Z and was there really a, a Ben no, well, that's just, a, you know, made the names up, you know? Yeah, well, actually, yeah, some of that is, there's no doubt some of the characters are true, but mm-hmm. if you still have the DVD and they have special features, check them out as well. I think it was pretty neat about the kid that always wanted to be the photographer and that's, then they gave him the stories about. That, yeah, and well, it's, it's his story, right? And then, of course, they put the pictures by accident in the newspaper and he freaks out and uh, that was pretty interesting. Interesting. So actually, yeah, as far as I know, most of the characters in there are real, are true. Hmm. 
so so it is worth seeing. Also, two other movies. One is Train Spotting with another movie that I didn't ever want to see. I know, I didn't ever want to see. I never wanted to see. But when I finally saw it, incredibly good filmmaking, yeah. an interesting story. Yeah. By the time the movie ends, you're, you're entertained and Well, you know something, maybe Sunday when I came back from plunging my guts out, maybe Sunday because I finally caved in. I was very adamant I wasn't going to watch City of God. I wasn't oh, I glad I watched much. it. It was good. Maybe no I'll watch Train Spotting and I'll just uh, take a potty break in that one yeah, scene. Yeah, just that one thing, but otherwise, and it's the best thing you and McGregor probably ever did, one of the best two things he ever did. Because I have it sitting right there in the other room, but in fact, I got it in the tea room because I think that's where it belongs because most of the time is spent in that, uh, you know, in that And area. I don't, I don't want to push my luck, but what? Schindler's List... Ah, my <laughs> oh, you guys are brutal. It's such, it's such great You're filmmaking. Oh, my God. It's, 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 too much with a Jews. it's about a kraut. Yeah, really. There's yeah. Jews oh. in there. Oh, Neil, it's one, if you like good filmmaking, it's one of the best, I mean, it's the best thing that okay. uh, Spielberg ever did. It's okay, a okay, I'll, great I'll make, this, I'll make this pledge in the next week, within the next week, by this time next Friday, I will have watched Schindler's List wow. and Train Spotting. And you know what? I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you, if they are two of the greatest movies ever made, I'll personally uh, send <laughs> Luca Brasi to your house and pee all over your doorstep. I'll say, if, if I hear that you sound like you wasted your time, I'll make sure I call back in so you can rein me an ass. Well, you I'll know? guarantee you one thing. It ain't going to be no Great constant enough. gardener, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> did you see that? No, I did not. Though a friend Please. recommended it, and now you're telling me not to waste my time. Please so do I not waste I, your time. I think I won't then. So I'll save not only the money; I'll just save the two hours. There you go. Thanks, Pally. Net, thank you, Neil. The money's not the big deal, but the two hours you can never get back. I could have been. I could have been watching the special features from City of God instead of watching right. the. Oh, no, let me say this real quick ass. before the break. Yes. Uh, Train Spotting is a good movie and just fine, but Schindler's List is great. Oh. It's a great movie. But I already got Train Spotting. Okay, I understand. I'll that. go out and buy Schindler's List. I'll go in there Schindler's and say, hey, guess what? I'm Jewish and very, uh, in there looking very much like, like Requiem for a Dream as far as yeah. what the storyline and what's it about and, and all this stuff. Um, but Schindler's List is See, I think you missed the boat on the election, the Palestinian election. I think it's really ironically sweet. That Hamas won the election because here oh. Bush is feeding the song and the dance about, oh, we're going to democratize oh, the no. whole Arab war. I, I guess. baloney you are, you know? know? And this is what's happening everywhere that yeah. they have an election. Yeah, all this baloney. I tell you what, let's have some free, honest elections in America again before we start worrying about all these elections <laughs> anyplace else, you know, with the Arabs and uh, the Jews and the Goyim. Let's start having some, some non rigged elections in the USA. And let's uh, redo that Canadian election. Let's get, bring these people back to their senses. 27 after one, and I noticed Stephen Harper who was sucking up to Bush all the time. Now he says, uh, "Hey, don't mess with our Arctic uh, Canadian." Uh, did you see that the other day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't be messing with us on that, Mister Butch, a macho right wing fascist uh, piece of crap. 27 after one at QAM, we got Geldy standing by speaking of Butch. The Emerald Coast is Florida's number one Asian gourmet buffet, is rated by Zagat Restaurant Review, and every Friday through Sunday night, like this weekend, you can enjoy the Lobster Fest. Featuring delicious, succulent Maine lobster served Thermidor style. And every night at the Emerald Coast is Crab Fest with Alaskan snow crab legs, Dungeness crab, and Jonah stone crabs. The menu still includes fresh oysters on a half shell, an incredible sushi bar with over 30, About 30 man. different items. Looking back at you. The Emerald Coast also serves New York steaks juicy and delicious, cooked to your order in hand carved prime rib, and a zillion other delicious fresh goodies, too. And on the weekends for dessert, try to save a little room. Take a shoehorn with your crowbar and make room for the fantastic, famous 40-inch chocolate fountain at the Emerald Coast. You can hand dip your own strawberries, marshmallows, other that can treats. In fact, you can hand dip your own or maybe somebody else's. January 27th to February 5th, that's today through the 5th, come celebrate the Chinese New Year with the Emerald Coast featuring roast duck, crispy chicken, and sweet and sour fish, and roasted suckling pig every night. The Emerald Coast has got three convenient locations to serve you. They're in Sunrise, Sunny Isles Beach, and Pembroke Pines. Reservations are suggested for a real pig out, man, a feast that will put a big smile on your puss. Call 954-572-3822 for the world-famous Emerald Coast Chinese Buffet. This is Neil Rogers. This is 562 AM. It's Friday, you bastard. <laughs> It's 
says and we want to take a listen now to some take that we got just a little bit earlier today to give you Funny some of the balance changing, this is senator jeff sessions a republican oh, get out of here yeah they've got john Kerry say about 15 words now we want to put on some republican uh, jackass for about half an hour on cnn you're certainly nazi network up yours jeff go back to alabama with a banjo on it uh your good buddy doug thompson in the rant and by the way my printer ain't printing right now but that's probably because i switched the thing on air but probably because i got to like reinstall it or something Right, or allow it to. You still got the uh, the disc that came with the printer? Oh, geez. Yeah, I'm sure I do. Right. You'll have to do that. I got to do that? Just throw the disc in there. It'll probably, uh, you know, fire its own self up, and then you just got to keep hitting next. I see. Well, I'll do that at 2 o'clock. Or maybe I'll do it right now and let you finish. All right. Uh, Doug Thompson, the rant, CapitalHillBlue.com. A clear and present danger to America writes, George W. Bush, the out-of-control despot who thinks the presidency of the United States is a license to lie at will, wage war on the women, and break the law without recrimination, put on his I am in charge phase yesterday, and for all practical purposes told anyone who thinks his power should be subject to review or oversight to go screw themselves. Bush told reporters that he'll assert his presidential prerogatives any damn way he pleases and will do so without apology, without question, without concern for the law, the Constitution, or the rights of Americans. His press conference was a frightening study of a madman on a tear, an insane, power-mad tyrant who believes he's above the law and can't be questioned. Sadly, it appears that nobody's got the balls to question his lunacy. I'm going to continue to do everything within my authority to protect the American people, Bush told reporters. That's Bush speak for, I'm in charge here, you dumb pukes, and there ain't a damn thing you can do about it. We'll continue our terrorist surveillance program against al-Qaeda. Congress must reauthorize the Patriot Act so that our law enforcement and intelligence and homeland security officers have the tools they need to route the terrorists, terrorists who can be planning and plotting within our borders, he said. Translation, I'll spy on Americans and I'll use the Constitution to wipe my ass with and I'll declare martial law and run this country like the dictator I want so desperately to be. On his illegal actions authorized the National Security Agency to spy on Americans, Bush said, if they attempt to write law, it's likely to expose the nature of the program. I'll resist it. What he's saying is, I'm above the law, damn it, and I'll fight every attempt to make me obey the law. On the Iraq war, Bush declared, there's an act passed by Congress in 2001 which said that I must have the power to conduct this war using the incidents of war. In other words, we believe there's a constitutional power granted to presidents, as well as, in this case, a statutory power. And I'm intending to use that power. Congress says, go ahead and conduct the war. We're not going to tell you how to do it. I worked on Capitol Hill for a number of years, Doug Thompson says, and wrote more than my share of legislation. I know a thing or two about how the government's designed to work and the checks and balances that are supposed to be built into the system. I've also read what Congress passed, and nothing in the Act or the Constitution gives Bush the authority he claims or the power he abuses. He's not just a liar. He's a G. Dan liar. How do you like that? G.D. Woo! Uh-oh. Man, too bad we can't say that. God. The arrogant surfaced off as he he faced the press. His eyes darted from side to side, blinking rapidly, a textbook example of a maniac on the loose. (laughs) Oh, yeah. His temper threatened to erupt more than once because a couple of reporters actually had the gall to question his motives. After too many years watching this man destroy what once was a great nation, I can only conclude that Bush is insane and his insanity is protected by a brain-dead populace and a power-mad political party that can't possibly accept the sad fact that they helped put a madman in charge of our government and helped keep him there. I believe with all my soul that George W. Bush and the Republicans who rubber stamp his actions represent a clear and present danger to the peace and security of the U.S. and all must be removed from office immediately if this nation is to survive. And those are words I never, ever thought I'd write about a president or other elected officials of this country, and I wish with all my heart I didn't have to write them now. But those who love this country and put patriotism above politics must act. America, if it wishes to remain America, must remove the cancer that threatens to destroy it. How do you like that? Anytime you got a cancer in your midst, do, 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 you got to get rid of it. You go, Doug. I told you he's good. And you say, ah, it's a crappy website. 
I'm sorry, I Josh. Isn't that. that what he always said? Yeah, that was it. See, Josh just got ten less stories for this weekend. <laughs> said he hates like poison. Yeah, yeah eight, fifteen less. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you have to suck up, as Mad Dog would say, but nevertheless, it can't hurt. Well, if you do it wrong, it does. We got 1,042 votes on it. Now, this is the poll for the weekend. I, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I mean, I, maybe uh, yeah. Sunday I'll, like, sneak an extra one in Surprise there. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Surprise. And don't forget, George, you're doing the stories tomorrow for Sunday. Saturday for Sunday. Got it. Oh, and then this thing about the printer, but a beep, but a boop, make sure it's turned on and online. Oh, gee, I don't want to hear about it. WQAM, hello. Oh, see, that won't, it won't, it won't work. I get rid of that. Get out of here. Go away. Now it should work. And it won't. Oh, Great. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pop off. I'm going to pop off. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> WQAM, hello. Turned on and on. QAM. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah. That press conference, it, I, I was sick off work yesterday, okay? Normally I listen to you because I, I actually can, you know, listen to the whole show uninterrupted, you know? Yeah. And I happened to make the mistake of watching that jackass. Oh, bad man. And, and I, I had like a stomach like I, I, My TV's already set automatic pilot. When he comes on in my in the living room, my TV goes to the other channel. I, I, I just wish I could do it. The thing was, like, I had a, like a stomach bug, you know? And I was on the verge of, of Ralph in any way. Then, then I, then he actually put me right over the edge. It was the worst thing I've ever seen. Ever. Okay, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. WQAM, hello. This thing is on really slow uh, cook today for some reason. I'm hitting the button and uh, doing nothing. Hmm. Why is that? There it is. I QAM, hello. Neil, did you get a chance to listen to the great Cortez article on his website? Are you, are you speaking of the thing in the holes in that phone, or are you, like, fading away, sir? Did you get a chance to, to read, read the, the article on the uh, Red Greg Cortex on the website? About the what? The website Reverend with a phony accent. What's that? Seven Reverend Jones. Yeah, okay, 790 with a bad phony accent, Reverend Jones. And you can use all the phony accents you want, but you still sound the same. When, in fact, you sound like You're a real, yeah, to me. Him and his uh, bunk butt buddy. I wonder how many times they saw Bearback Mountain. About 30, man. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. From the controversial mayor of New Orleans comes a brand new chocolate treat. This will be chocolate. Racist peanut butter cups. How do you make chocolate? It's a delicious blend of dark chocolate. You take dark chocolate? Surrounding a super dome of peanut butter. And because it's Ray Nagin's racist peanut butter cups, all the peanut butter has been moved out and replaced with chocolate. That's the chocolate I'm talking about. Just the way God intended. It's the way God wants it to be. And be sure to try the delicious new chocolate drink. Megan's Quick. You mix it with white milk, and it becomes a, a delicious drink. And for chocolate, and nothing but chocolate, try Racist Pieces. You can't have chocolate no other way. Yeah, okay, whatever you say. It's uh, 145 at 560, WQAM. Five arrested in dog pig fighting. What? The men have been charged with staging fights between dogs and pigs at a Seminole Reservation. How do you like that? <laughs> Most people have heard of cockfighting, dogfighting, and bullfighting, and now more bull. Another entry in the illegal world of bloody sports apparently has come to South Central Florida. Hog dog fighting. Hot dog. It's pit bulls or bulldogs against wild boars. Oh, maybe Daniel Baxter is in there speaking of boars. Uh, and whether it's a teeth versus tusk bloodbath, seldom do pigs ever defeat the dogs. But that didn't stop several enterprising men from hosting an afternoon of dog versus pig wars at a Seminole Indian reservation near Okeechobee. See, that's what most of Florida is really all about. That's why you haven't got a Chinaman's chance in a uh, Egyptian restaurant. Because uh, that's what most of Florida is. It's Yahooville, baby. Bible thumping rednecks. Yeah. Yeah. Like your fat ass governor. It took 14 months, but on Thursday, the long armored law finally caught up with him, sending five to the Huskow. Or is that the hog cow? The, cow. the pig All pig. leaders of the National Hog Dog Fighting Group. Oh, leaders of the National... This is hog almost dog. as good as Christian wrestling. The National Hog Dog Fighting Group. 
It's a little-known blood sport that's been around for 25 years, mostly practiced in South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Texas, and Florida, according to John Goodwin, Deputy Manager of Animal Fighting Issues for the Humane Society of USA. Let me say those states again. South Carolina, Mississippi, yeah. Alabama, yeah. Georgia, Texas, and Florida. And you wonder why oh, you can't right. get nothing done that makes any sense in Florida, why you got a bunch of mugwump politicians? One of the key arrests was that of Art Parker of Fort Lawn, South Carolina, president of the International Cats Dog Association, which boasts its own website, DixieWarDogs.com. All right, Dixie War Dogs. Law enforcement authorities have been after him for a long time, said Goodwin, who hopes his arrest will put an end to the organization. Other key men arrested were Don Matthews of Fort Pierce, Jorge and Ariel Diaz of Homestead, and Rick Cressley of Albertus, Pennsylvania. Arrest warrants in connection with the event were executed in South Carolina and Pennsylvania through the Glades County State Attorney's Office, Seminole Police said. The dog fight took place um, October 9, 2004, in the backyard of a home owned by a Seminole Indian at the reservation, authority said. Oh, how do you like that, huh? Oh, my God, by a Seminole Indian. Hog dog fights typically match a pit bull terrier or a bulldog against a wild boar in rectangular. Well, that's a good way to get rid of them pit bulls, you know. In a rectangular 25 by 25 outdoor ring bound by wooden post for 60 second bouts. The object is to see how fast the dog can catch the pig as it runs for its life. The dog usually snares the pig within just a few seconds. Yep. The dog stops the pig by clamping its jaws against its snout, ears, or testicles. Lordy. The animals are then pried apart with a metal bar. If the pig survived, it's returned to the ring for another fight. If the pig collapses, it's just left there to die. Come on, man. Oh, give, give a pig this a break. This is just lovely. I'm going to have me a bratwurst for lunch just out of protest. I'm going to have a hot dog. The three dogs with the best times are declared the winners, wieners, with their owners, in this case, splitting a cash pool of about ten grand. Hog dog fighting is a violation of animal cruelty laws and illegal in the USA. In Florida, it's a third-degree felony. Punishable by up to five years in jail and a $5,000 fine. Being a spectator of the illegal sport is also a crime, a misdemeanor, punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine. We received a tip back then that a hog dog fight was going to take place at Seminole Police Department Detective Steve Lopez, whose department contact authorities from the Department of Agriculture. Undercover agents videotaped the fights, the participants, and the spect uh, spectators. 21 dogs, their owners, at least 14 wild boars participated. Fourteen wild boars, and that's—I uh, thought there were only nine on that pool. I must have left the part-timers off. Yes, on the ticket, left them off the ticket. Oh, wait till you hear this. You're going to want to go back to school again. Showing yeah. the R-rated movie, The Forty-Year-Old Virgin, during high school Spanish class this week in Lexington, Kentucky, resulted in suspension for the teacher, Fernando Fernando Del Pino was suspended with pay Tuesday for showing the movie to students at Lexington's Tate's Creek High School the day earlier, said Lisa Defendall, spokesman for the Fayette County Public Schools. He resigned yesterday. Del Pino, who was hired in August, said he decided to show the film after a student brought it to class and said it was very funny. Mm -hmm. The movie's about a 40-year-old single man. Why, did you see that, the 40-year-old virgin? No, I didn't. The movie's about a wild well, I guarantee it's better than uh, The Constant Gardener. It's about a 40-year-old single man whose friends try to help him gain experience in sex. R-rated movies are not to be shown to anyone younger than 17 without parent or guardian. The movie was rated R for pervasive, explicit, and crude sexual content and drug use. All right. Parents of Tate's Creek students must give written permission for their children to watch an R-rated movie at school, according to the school's video policy. Students whose parents object must be given alternative assignments, like watching, uh, you know, Lassie Come Home or Snow White right. and the Seven Dwarfs or uh, some other widow dwarf. Old Yeller. The policy also states the video movies must be part of the lesson plan with genuine instruction objectives. So, in other words, if they would have had, like, 40-year-old virgin in Espanol, that would have been okay. You could have put on the Spanish, Spanish subtitles. Defendall said the investigation was initiated because it appears that Tate's Creek policy was not followed. The suspension letter was issued Tuesday, the same day a complaint was reported. Yada, yada, yada. The 40-year-old virgin. And, like, those kids will never be the same again, and they've been polluted and perverted, et cetera, and so on. And I just read a thing which I was trying to print it out, and I'll have to, like, install that thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, who cares? About uh, serious radio not doing all so great. That's bad, ain't it? Serious? Uh, dead serious. And about how they took a poll and like 60% of the people said that they wouldn't subscribe to uh, subscription radio if uh, you gave them like 14 uh, chocolate bananas with each uh, subscription. How do you like that? Gee, what a shock. Chocolate. How many votes we got on the poll, huh? We can make like 3,000 by the weekend. And like I said, about 2,300. 1,061. By the way, Fun with Dick and Jane has got none. Father of the Bride's got none. Didn't we have two calls for fun with the Dick and Jane like we left that off? Well, right. they're, they're a little slow. So let me say it again. Do not 
And here we are. It's almost time to go, and we haven't had one call from anybody who even liked even a little bit the Constant Gardener. Or saw it. I thought it was about high in Maryland Gardener myself. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. You get a lot of it. Neil Rogers on Sports Hole Radio WQAM. Miami Dade is losing the fish. Oi! Wah, wah, wah. Miami Dade is losing the fish. Wah, wah, wah. Ah. What will the sport horrors do? Boo, boo, boo. Lori is a cowardly boob. Samson is a cleanie poop. No consequence at all. Let him choke on the love of balls. Miami Dade is losing the fish. Wap, wap, wap. Miami Dade is losing the fish. Wap, wap, wap. Find about it all you want. In your overdeveloped swamp. Can't imagine where they went wrong. They played about as good as this song. Miami Dade is losing the fish. Wap, wap, wap. Miami Dade is losing the fish. Quack, quack, quack. Miami Dade is losing the fish. Quack, quack, quack. Miami Dade is losing the fish. So I guess that's a good time to mention again, but be sure and come out to the Marlins Select a Seat tomorrow, because who knows how much longer you'll be able to pick your seat, right? That's right. You can't stop me. There you go. Select a seat 10 to 2 tomorrow, 10 in a.m. till 2 p.m. You can meet Don Trell Willows and say, hey, why not get on a real team, Don Trell, between 10 and noon. And then you can lock in tickets for the Red Sox before individual tickets go on sale. By the way, speaking of Don Trell Willows, of course, it's not baseball season now. And I guess it also depends on who we got going to be doing 2 to 4, right? Right. Because didn't we have learning a spell with Don Trell between uh, like 3.30 or something when Mo was on during baseball season, Josh? Yes, we did. Well, I, I guarantee you that whoever's going to be on there, like Mad Dog from 2 to 6, or maybe Curtis 2 to 4, whatever. Anyway, you can lock in tickets for the Red Sox before individual tickets go on sale if you drop your pick your seat tomorrow. Plus, you can register with a, pre- a private luxury suite for opening day. That's Marlins Select a Seat tomorrow at Dolphin Stadium, 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. And since we're not on tomorrow, what else are you going to do between 10 and 2, right? Right. Go out there and do it. Now, here, I'm going to read it off because I can't print out yet. Are you sure i got to put that disc in? I don't think so. It's already been installed in this uh, computer. You shouldn't have to, but it, it wants it. How do you know that? Does it keep asking for it, trying to install it? Trying to no. Do something? All right, no. Well, it doesn't then, ask for anything. Well, then don't. But it ain't printing, though. Well, then. It's well, let's not go back and do this again. Can I just read the thing? I'll, I'll finger it out. If I got this far, you can be damn sure I'll get that right. thing all straight. Why don't you just keep restarting it? Restarting what? The computer while everything's... Ah, jeez. Satellite radio and Stern's move to Sirius don't test well. A new study by Roper Omnitel. How do you like that? Isn't that disappointing? Ah, oh, jeez. What are we going to do? 69%. I gave you a wrong number before. 69% of the over 1,000 respondents said they're not at all likely to consider buying a satellite radio service. American Media Services commissioned the study, and its president and CEO, Ed Seeger, says, We have long suspected that all the national media interest in Stern and satellite radio doesn't really reflect what's going on with the American consumer. There's also encouraging news about local radio in the study. How do you like that, huh? About Mm. so-called terrestrial, old-fashioned radio. Well, guess what? Your mama. So socks in hell. How do you like them apples, huh? What movie should never have been remade? Those sequels mostly suck. Didn't we have one that was like a good sequel? Somebody mentioned the other day, The Thing. The Thing was a good sequel. And it was a King Kong. Psycho 103, War of the Worlds 93, Planet of the Apes 85, Pink Panther 82, The Longest Yard 69, The Bad News Bears 62, Herbie the Love Bug 42. Maybe that's what got in my computer, the Love Bug. Rollerballs 39, Willy Wonka, and then uh, 38, and then uh, The Blob has got about 30, man. Small potatoes after that. Geldy is coming up next from the Yenta Center because the Panthers hosting the New Jersey Devils and Marty Brodeur. The Devils are as hot as a pistola, and then we got Mad Dog at four this afternoon. Bye, bye, bye!